And we are speaking of Navi Jr. He was once in, in Navi, right? So the story is related. He, he was once. Very good. Yeah, Very the, good Impressive. There, yeah, there, there. You, connecting the dots. Um, <laughs> Very good. Yeah, but dude, like he, he, I don't know, he just surprised me. He came to my chat and stayed there for like an hour at least, just talking to people randomly. Um, cool guy. Playing Deadlock as well quite a lot, apparently. <laughs> There's Pudge in Deadlock, dude. Like, you can hook people. Bebop or whatever. Did you play it? No, I, I've, you, I've I, tried to watch like a couple of minutes, but I just can't. It's hard watching. It's like uh, not playing it any MOBA yeah. and then watching Dota. I feel like it's really hard to watch, but playing is... I I actually think it's a fun game. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, we'll see. I've just... Yeah, I've been watching... Like, I watched a couple of minutes and really couldn't follow, so I'm like, okay, maybe I'll just... I'll leave it. Maybe I'll like watch a little bit in a couple of months or something like that mm. and, and maybe get into it, but yeah. You know who's not fun, Aries? Omni Knight is no fun. I mean, this hero ruins no. the fun. He just st stands behind and breaks apart all your uh, attempts to kill someone. And this repel spell is absolutely busted. I think every single thing from him should be dispellable. Just the is it? How can I never dispel yeah. repel? Like, how is that the case? Like, I can never dispel it. Why does it say dispellable? Yes. I've tried. I've, I've thrown my headset at the monitor and it still stays on repel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, still think, there. <laughs> there's been some cases where like it's changed from being dispellable to not dispellable and then yeah i don't know maybe he's got some bug that's going on at the moment with it not being uh, uh, not being uh, able to, to get dispelled i don't know in any case the hero is really damn strong i think feel like if you're uh, dandelions your option might be even to just uh go on omni with the doom doom him up and then play the game off of that but the problem for Doom here as well is this last pick, or I think second last pick, whatever, Centaur. Because it uh, it allows you to get away from the Doom, and it allows you to get away from the Warlock, from Chaotic Offering. So it was yeah. a pretty damn good pick, and it's a good lane with Dark Willow. So nicely done by Navi J. Do you, do you see a lineup, though, that you feel like is a little bit easy to execute? Because I feel like I just see a lot of raw damage from Danny Lions. Like, you have incredible team fight you've got the scaling with the wind ranger like your potential to get on top of the omni knight this hero that you're very concerned about with his involvement throughout the game so like do we see is it do is there a lineup that you're actually favoring in regards to strengths but you know what like both teams have really uh, good things it's not like I'm not favoriting, favoriting one or the other lineup like super heavily. I feel like if it comes down to teamfight execution, maybe it's a bit easier for uh, Navi Junior. That is, yeah, okay. But just because of just because of the stampede, I feel like it. Re it's a great reset here. But besides that, I feel like yeah, both teams. If you're gonna talk about the nice things on the other side, you've got drinking buddies together with uh, Nande's Wind Ranger like that. That's insane. Later on, you know, uh, the Tusk and the hero himself is pretty damn good at the moment. So we're gonna see some uh, very interesting combos coming out from him. And Desire very comfortable on the hero as well. You see, Master Tier with the Tusk gonna be paired up with. I was going by Palantimos. I'm not sure if it's Yayo now or if it actually is a, a stand-in, but we've seen, of course, previously. I mean, Palantimos Ooh. has been playing offlane. Oh, that was a power shot. They survived on like one HP, basically. Uh, power shot almost finished him down bottom. But yeah, like you were saying uh, about Palantimos. Yeah, he's uh, transitioned. Like, I mean, he's been offlane for a couple months now, but you know, from carry into the three role and i feel like it's very interesting that that's one of the roles that we see honestly a lot of people transition to i mean you are now with enigma i mean noob has just moved over to the three you you had ramses pure everyone i mean nightfall there's been so many people that have tried mm -hmm. to to play three i mean gabby in southeast asia the list can go on and on as top lane riddies i would end up going down not the case a lot of harass why do you feel like that is the role that people swap to 
I think it's some sort of a Stockholm syndrome. You know, you get abused okay. so much by the offlaner that eventually you're like, you either uh, die a hero or live long enough to become a villain. You know, you just become the offlaner oh, yourself. <laughs> That's it. But uh, all jokes aside, like it, it's kind of built into you that you know what you're supposed to be doing because you're playing against that 24 seven. Like you're playing against an offlane. So laning stage itself is uh, more or less you just have to inverse you know just just look into the look into the other side and do what he was doing before uh, so it's not that okay. difficult to adapt and uh, that right now offlaners not right now for the last couple of years they just get so much farm anyway on the map you're the true carry yeah yeah going to the days where the offlaners are uh, sacrificed and don't have a lot of net worth to play with. Honest to God, of the days anyone has not got net worth to, to play with. We're really seeing pretty much all five rollers have been incredibly pivotal to uh, to success from from many teams. But I guess not much is really happening in the lane so far. Like you you have pretty even affair. Everyone's last hitting incredibly well. I, I guess the only thing to mention is maybe that mid lane we saw Niku actually drag the wave back behind the tower to try and farm it by the hard camp. So he's maybe feeling like this is a little bit more efficient for the mm -hmm. primal beast, especially into the tiny. But overall, everyone's pretty happy. I and mean, PMA oh. starting to be harassed a little bit here with the two points up in the shadow word. But uh, it's a pretty slow laning stage. Yeah, they just missed the ice shards as well. Top lane, that Luna was probably dead. So some mistakes here and there. The only lane that is really going well for one side is uh, the mid lane, right? Like but that you mentioned, Tiny is... Um, it was a good last pick. Like I, I wasn't sure how um, strong he's going to be lane, in the breeze. lane. Ah, finally, here we go. First blood. Got the boys on Radiant that's able to strike first. Yes, they do indeed. So Radius goes down. You have your, your wish of the Omni Knight being crushed. I'm happy. <laughs> that's all I wanted. Uh, but then again, Drinking Buddies level 2. This is probably one of the... I'm honestly surprised. I guess, um, you know, Valve is a small company. They're working on that log. They don't have the resources to give us a patch after the TI, but I'm surprised uh, Drinking Buddies wasn't at least nerfed. You know, some of these heroes are ridiculously overpowered at the moment. Wind Ranger, Tusk, I feel like. This goes uh, on. There's like a list of good 510 heroes that can be, uh, you know, nerfed at least a tiny yeah. little bit. Yeah, definitely. We, we, without a doubt. It's a big thing. We're still seeing those heroes get played at the moment. Mid lane, there is. Mobe is putting a lot of pressure onto Niku's primal base. I mean, missing, I believe this is two creeps down to the town. Might even get the kill as well. Niku, not going to die under the combo. But he will have to make another trip back to base. And this will probably be another full wave he misses top lane now. Use of the drinking buddies. Able to close the distance onto Got the Juice. But the purification heal, it might be enough to keep the Lunar alive. Terms with the beam. But it will Oof. not slow Danny Lions down. And even with the TP from Days, hang on a second, Days, he's not going to win this man fight. So they now feel forced to bring the Primal Beast top. Niku at least might be able to make amends and you know get a kill, get some experience. Much oh, needed man. here for the mid laner. But the drinking buddies movement speed, no oh, way. Oh. They're going to make it out. Desire has the shards, but unable to place it perfectly. It won't matter in the end, though. Brambles. Brambles. Small connect. Nice placement from. What? He's alive? Oh, oh my god. Okay. This game is over, oh. dude. <laughs> Go next. This Primal Beast just rotated top. He's level five and a half. Um, didn't manage to get any of those kills. You know why they're able? Of course, drinking buddies and everything that Tusk brings, like even his bitter chill is goddamn busted. Uh, but why, why they were able to get out was this creep that they got early on on Doom. Like he got the speed aura, the little cobbled foreman, ah. and he's just giving them all the necessary movement speed to juke, jive, kill off the Luna and get away afterwards. And now they want to pressure bottom. Look at this move. I really like this. I mean, you have the catapult wave. You saw the support TP top with the Dark Willow, so it's going to be difficult to protect the Centaur. And now you want to try and slow him down as well. So this kill, it'll open up a lot of... In fact, this tower is gone. They have no glyph. I mean, this early game from Dandelions, they are playing incredibly well. Yeah, this is looking formidable at the moment. Tiny also rotates in. No real necessity, but there is a minute seven rune, and they're. I feel like they're just losing it. Ridis is gonna try and steal the other one, but 
I feel like he won't be able to. Let's see. Maybe he clicks faster. Oh. Doesn't click faster and will end up dying in the end. Gonna use the full combo. Maybe he can get a deny, but that won't be the case. So, four kills, 2,000 net worth lead. We were speaking You're... about the tiny. Can be a bit of a volatile hero, right? You needs to snowball, and he's off to a hell of a start. Yeah, I don't want to be the one, but this game might be uh, already done. Like, losing two Wisdom Runes this early on, when you're already losing the lanes. Look, it's not like you're owning the yeah. lanes, and uh, it's you're losing the lanes. Your uh, Dark Willow is level 3. Um, good luck getting those ultimates. Good luck being able to fight. Yeah, I'm just I'm looking at the levels. I mean, uh, this is crazy. You see that the supports are same level as the offlaner as the carry as well from Navi Jr. So, and with the lead you have as well, it's going to be a bit easy for them to secure the power runes. I do say that though, it does look like Navi Jr. are going to try and put some emphasis to rotate some of the extra heroes. And it will you... be a illusion rune spawning bottom. You know, at this Dario's point, there. has got six. It's going to rotate. Niku? No, it doesn't really get locked in by the shards. Yeah, I'm not sure. Like, at this point, maybe that's the best thing you can do. Rotate everyone in. Nande is doing something crazy, though. Oh, well done. Nice sidestep, but still, it shouldn't matter. The shackle will stop a little bit of the duration out of the stampede, and Nande's actually okay. So this is four heroes down that tried to stop the Wind Ranger from escaping over to the triangle, and now the rest of Dandelions, they're, they're sweeping over. Yeah, they see an opportunity. Oh. And with the shards, perfect placement from Desire. Will they? Okay, the Shackles as well. Dude, Nande, great placement of his hero position. But they're going to get the toss back as well. PMA finds a stun on the tower. A little bit messy. Got the juice, just forced to TP down. Not the position where the Luna wants to be, but you know, they have to do some crazy moves to try and offset this big advantage that we're seeing Radiant play with. And your carry and your offlane are now fighting for last hits as well, which isn't really what you want to have. Uh, especially because I really think PMA, this uh, centaur on the dire side, is probably their most important and valuable uh, hero. And even though he lost the lane, they need this blade mail. They need this blade mail to be able to do something to the Windrunner, but Doom. It's gonna be, this might be I don't know. Yeah. yeah, this is an opportunity. We do see Radiant though, they're at the triangle. Intercepting dies, extra heroes down to bottom. Kadar is still ready with the rock, but doesn't see the greatest opportunity. He's gonna be forced to use it on today's feeling like, okay, at least it'll guarantee, it, okay, won't even guarantee a kill onto a support. So a little bit messy spell casting from Danny Lines, but really with that being said, like Dire aren't getting that much. Got the juice, just got back over towards his jungle area. Niku will still charge in, so the action hasn't stopped just yet. The snowball's only going to delay the inevitable, and they'll probably get the kill onto Desire as well, so... Uh, there's some messy stuff going on this game. I mean, Niku has to die. There was some crazy damage. He dies to the neutral somehow out of all that damage, but uh, there's some weird stuff going on, Lizard. I don't know what's happening. Yeah, like, if you look at the way they're playing, it's just so unnecessary from Radiant. Dandelions, they had absolutely crushed these uh, lanes right like they they had all the all what they needed and then they went full i'm not gonna say what you know like instead it, like when you have this sort of an advantage you can just continue playing the lanes two one two and just stay uh, stay like that you're dominating you continue farming and the enemy team they're the ones that need to five man stack because they have two supports level three and four they, they're the ones that need to make things happen. It's not you that needs to force this. I think they just felt a bit too eager Andy? to make. Oh, oh, he's blocked. Hunting it got the juice, but... It's fine, though, I mean, right? Anyway, but the creeps, regardless, they're going to tank a lot of the beams. Dyer are coming down to bottom, but... Are they going to be there in time to keep got the juice alive? They'll assassinate Nande off of the left side. Luna should still go down. That's a huge fatal bond. So it's going to prove to be disastrous for Dyer. They go deep into Radiant Zone Jungle, and with all the AoE spells, they have to get out. You'll see a TP out of one. The Dark Willow will escape at PMA. Yo, he's taking. You've got the Omni Knight nearby. Maybe they want to turn to Riddis instead, seeing a bit an easier kill onto the Omni. Once they deal with the healing support, then they can catch up to PMA, and oh, that'll be the case. So, uh, you, yeah, you get Nande, but it puts yourselves in such a compromised position where Radiant, they can TP down to their T1 tower. And of course, get some return kills in the end. 
Yeah, he was trying, he was waiting on the Twin Gates and he was hoping that the Wind Ranger Nande will clear the camp and then go to the to the Twin Gate, right? He was expecting that play. However, Nande, he didn't finish the wave, he moved there without finishing it. Uh, not the wave, sorry, the creep camp. And because of that, all that Lucent Beam damage from uh, Eclipse was soaked up by the creeps. So what was supposed to be an easy pick off and run away by Got the Juice turned into this disaster. Um, then again, I feel like another move that, you know, it's like high risk, low reward kind of a kind of a play. It is a tilty play though. If you kill that Wind Ranger there solo with Luna, I think he tilts. <laughs> so. Okay. Read this. So you're playing for the tilt factor. That that's of what course. you're playing for. Of course. Haze Root now as well activated from Mobe. They're gonna try and catch up to Got the Juice. Let's see if he should be able to toss him potentially back on the creeps. Well done, Mobe. There's gonna be some TPs coming out. Terrorize there to disrupt the combo, but with the Doom, there's no escape from the Luna. Maybe they can turn it around though. Niku looking to make amends. The damage from himself is able to deal with the Warlock. Now turns to Desire next as well. Niku is good for two, but now Nande is gonna try and turn up and at least show what impact he can have. Would do his best to chase down Niku, and still without the blade mail, Niku. It's not going to matter in the end. Won't have to try and mitigate some of the focus fire damage, especially with the Omni Knight nearby. So, uh, you, again, you're losing some cores. The big one is going to be the carry. Three deaths now at the moment for Got the Juice, but mm -hmm. you, know, you got some kills. Yeah, you got some kills, and uh, that carry that just died, he died to Doom. So, one big ulti was used. A Warlock's ulti was used as well. These are all long cooldown spells. So... Overall, considering that you're 5k behind and the lanes didn't go too great for you, it's not the worst thing. Uh, plus, keep in mind that Luna, one of the one of her strengths right now is this 404 build, um, with which you farm extremely fast and you can fight. So she's gonna recover. It's not the end of the world. Do we? Do you feel like you would? like to see dandelions kind of slow down the pace a little bit because we have seen you know, with the net worth that they accumulated from the early game and the lanes they've been looking to try and use that and use the blink and be very active we, do we want to see them continue or maybe try and get this next set of items and then go i feel like you can just wait your ulties and go again there there isn't some big item that you have to wait for uh, there's a lot of them <laughs> there's a lot of big items but they're in a spot in which their heroes just do a lot together once they come Bind the way they have like your tiny is probably the strongest he's gonna be in the next 10 minutes um yeah, because his combo actually deals a lot of damage right now once that minute 25 hits and these bracers become stupid he's gonna fall off um dark willow with two bracer of course you know omni knight with one bracer of course not nothing wrong there centaur with three bracers you don't need anything, just buy Bracers and Dota. Yeah, good item, good item there. Bottom lane, Mobe. But you do see the position there for the Omni Knight. So Gritty's playing behind, got the juice. <laughs> making sure there's no opportunity. <laughs> you know, we had a lot of bullying in the Balkan scene when uh, uh, in Dota. Uh, I wasn't a part for the majority of it, thank God. <laughs> I came in a bit okay. late by the end, but... Wait, uh, you were the bully, or...? No, 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 I mean, I wasn't part of the scene. I, I came in a bit too late. Uh, they all played Dota 1, I, I played Warcraft 3, but the, the the way they would bully someone is, if someone is playing badly, they'd just be like, bro, buy bracers. <laughs> 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 they'd force you to buy, like, three, four bracers, and you'd feel... Sh you'd be all red in your face, you know, just feel ashamed in the internet club. But you won't be dying, at least. Look at Katara's positioning. <laughs> what is the Warlock doing here? That's crazy. I mean, he feels so confident at the moment. And what is something I want to bring up? Like, his net worth as well. 3, 2, and 4. 38 last hits. Solar Crest. But importantly, it's a DD on Mobe. They are ready to go. They've got the vision, like you said. They're going to try and make the attempt onto Niku. And with the Doom committed, that'll be an easy one. Dire. Do they still want to take the team fight down the Primal Beast? Because over to the right side, Desire... We'll be able to catch up to Riddies, but no one else has really got spells. Mobe waiting for the combo back up, and he might think about jumping the base. Riddies gets back far enough. These kind of play these kind of initiations and kills, this is like top lane, Luna. Top lane? Okay. Yeah, he thought about it because they are rotating in. 
Um, and they have a blink now, which is very important on Sun Tower. Like, one thing they were missing is any form of shape or way of playing this game. Like, Primal Beast just wasn't it. Primal Beast, first he had a rough laning stage, and then it's kind of telegraphed. You were going to see him coming. But Centaur with a the blink, they might be able to make some plays. In any case, losing one hero to Doom plus Warlock ulti isn't the end of the world. What can they do with that, though? Because we see, I mean, Doom's down for 80 seconds. Uh, at least the Nothing. ultimate. And of course... <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing, just farm. That's it. Yeah, that, that's okay. Well, they're gonna, they're gonna try. You, you said with the blink on PMA, maybe they feel like there's a, an opportunity here. I, I just farmed the Luna, honestly. But they want to make a play. Let's see how it goes. Desire, Desire. is. Yeah. Oh, what a read from Desire, and it's gonna make them waste some time. Kidara is gonna try and TP in. They're putting a lot of attention onto the toss, toss, unable to get the snowball off in the end, and Raiden are gonna funnel in one by one. And this is looking like it's not going to be a fight to be had. So, unfortunately, unable to get the snowball off. Kadaru didn't get the solar crest for the extra health barrier as well into the toss. Maybe <laughs> well, there was an opportunity for a fight to be had, but you know, very nicely done. Navi Jr., it's only 3,000. They're going to be farm up the triangle as well. Maybe even get this tower. So, they're doing a pretty good job to claw their way back. Yeah, and there's nothing crazy that they have to utilize for this to work, right? Like, there is no big ulties. Um, like, you don't have any long cooldowns, really. Um, maybe Stampede and that's it. Like, your Pulverize isn't that long. Eclipse, sure, but, you know, you don't have to use it all the time. Smoke? Smoke on smoke, let's go. This is the Dota I like. <laughs> just, just fight. Initial read is off, but they might actually connect into PMA's location. There's a Gleipnir on uh, Nande, by the way, so that's what they wanted to use. <laughs> Dude. Oh, they're actually coming. Okay. So Desire's actually going to have some extra heroes, and yeah, there's that Gleipnir coming to play. PMA. It's got play in the trees, blink in a couple seconds. Niku's going to come through, but the Doom instantly tries to slow down the spell casting. It's still. Uh, it's going to favor Dire in the end. A little bit awkward there. Mobe flies in late, but. Yeah, this is. Again, not enough. This, this this is like literally one hero the moment he scouted him out my mind went like uh really uh, can you and then he dealt a lot of damage on his own uh he he brought centaur to like 50 percent hp so i was like okay maybe they can kill him but if you don't connect on him immediately with that life and blow him up before everyone connects you will die there Especially because of blade mail like wind runner she cannot use focus fire that easily and that freely she can't right click him that freely as well. Oh, nice response by uh, Navi Jr. I mean, this game's even. Lizard, we're under a thousand net worth lead at the moment. Yeah. So, Dandelions have really tried to force the issue and Dive done a great job at responding to their movements. And again, Riddies, like the position from the Omni Knight, uh, unfortunately, it will be a double damage from that spawn top. So, again, Mobe has got an, another active room and he's 4 0 and 4, second in net worth. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Dive done an incredible job to stabilize this game. I'm surprised they didn't deward the cliff um, once Centaur got gone on. Yep. It was under a ward and they didn't deward it after fighting, which is maybe an oversight, but overall, he knows what's coming. He even encircled that area and went back. Let's see, probably gonna give up this T2 tower by the looks of it. They wanted to tramp with their attention over towards the Tormentor, which will give the Agadim Shard to the Dark Willow. So you have this one now online. And they're just happy with trying to occupy the south side of the map. We're going to try and control this area up, of course, with the Manta from Got the Deuce. They can push out bottom, get mid as well. So they just want to try and get their lanes in a good position at the moment. They are looking to try and avoid some fights. I mean, you're very close to the BKB. Niku just needs about 200 gold until that one's completed. You're also looking for the BKB on the Lunar as well. Yeah, I don't know. The more this game goes, uh, the easier I find Dyer's Draft to play. You know, I feel like it will become easier and easier for them. Uh, Wind Ranger might hit more and more problems, finding the suitable target to go on. Go on. Primal Beast has Blade Mail, so does Centaur. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. They, they have to make some moves and they want to use this double damage. They want to change the status quo. So maybe it's a pick off they're hoping into Roche. 
See where they want to try and transition it. They are very split. Kadaro's going to run into Days. And Daisy, oh, I, I'm a force of rock. It will try and TP out, but unfortunately that's not going to be the case. So they'll get the kill. Rock has that's to be right. used. And yeah, that's that's Rush. So happy with it just onto a support. I think you're not super happy that you gave away Rosh. At the same time, you weren't ready to fight anyway. Your Luna is 100 gold away, 200 from uh, BKB. So this Rosh truly isn't that important for Dire. Maybe they can let it go. Tusk, however, he wants to set up something mid, maybe. They want to death this. They're all coming. Okay, there will be no so... Nande. Okay. I guess they just got scared, right? Yep. Maybe a little bit concerned still about the strength from Danny Line, so Nande gets ages. Now, do you fight into this, though, if you're Navi Jr.? Because you were saying, you know, you're lacking BKBs. You have them now completed. Do you feel like they have the strength to, t to take these fights, or would you prefer them to avoid? I, it all depends on how the fights go. Like, if you can bait out some of these big spells, like uh, Warlock Cult and Doom Ult and then Stampede away, I feel like that would be the best case for you. Like, lose maybe Dark Willow or Omni, but bait out two big spells and run away, and then fight when they respawn. Because the cooldowns on those spells are still massive, like 130 on Doom. Your support is going to be up in, like, 30 seconds max, like 30, 40 seconds. So you'll still have over 100 seconds or around 100 seconds to fight afterwards. Um, fighting into Aegis is never great, but honestly, I think they have all they need. Uh, there's a pipe now completed on Centaur, or at least it's flying out to him as, as well. Oh, you've been speaking a lot about the Centaur being an issue for the Doomed. Would you, is there even a consideration for him just being Doomed inside the fight so the Stampede isn't a factor? I mean, <laughs> it's kind of a bad Doom target, you know, like, okay, you can Doom him, but you're, you're most likely not killing him, and then you're still playing without Doom. Uh, I feel like, I don't know, the, the, the lack of control, I think they just need to find a way to combo the, the Tiny plus the Rock plus the Doom. Because they do have spells, they, like you have Gleipnir, you have Ice Shards, you have Avalanche. One Stampede should be kind of countered at least a little bit <laughs> so somehow you have okay. to outplay it well we potentially just have to see fights in choke points right where you have the shards maybe to block off mm -hmm. the escape avenue shackles to potentially land in a close proximity area you've got those aoe spells as well so we're just gonna kind of have to see where the location of the fight actually does break out days oh, i think pma is gonna make it through the portal it looks like days may see? be in trouble is he gonna make it 0 0.8 yeah, seconds? There, oh, there's, an, there's enough time for Tiny to blink. Uh, stun him. If he wanted to. I mean, to. he's... Yeah, I think he... Okay, yeah, He's mind. gone. <laughs> never mind. That oh, was... <laughs> Dave's right click. <laughs> uh, he's gonna get caught, but you're wasting a lot. Is he gonna get caught? Oh, oh my god! No way! Ah. Oh, the timing of the Curse Crown, dude. Are you serious? Uh, oh. <laughs> Oh, that's so much space. <laughs> you're, you're speaking a lot about the ultimates on Dandelions and this being a, you know, something that you can kind of kite and avoid fights. And when they're off cooldown, then they want to go. But now, like, without Rock, let's see what Radiant can do. Because this Aegis, it's only got two minutes left on it. Yeah, nice Cursed Crown shard, by the way, on the Dark Willow. Prevented uh, Doom as well from, from hitting her. Uh, cool, cool. Like, n nicely done by days I do think that they're in full control now of the map they have to make sure that Luna doesn't die somehow like if you're dandelions and you're able to blow up Luna I feel like that's the easiest way for you to play uh, of course Omni is a problem but if you can rock rock has huge AoE a tiny deals a lot of damage maybe that's an option I don't know uh, because everything else feels a bit hard they're going to try and take an angle from the left here. Navi Jr. Maybe the way they wrap around. The Zaya he knows. shows under the ward. Gets rid of the information. They're going to place another Observer down. Oh, what a combo! Nice. In with the Glyph there along with the Avalanche. But they disrupt it. 
They'll activate the pipe, mitigate a lot of the initiation, and now they'll be forced to reset off the back of the stampede with this on cooldown. Maybe an opening for the Doom, and they recognize that on Na'Vi Jr. They're going to be forced to give up the area, and this will be a tier 2 that goes the way of Dandelions. So, they had exactly that idea. Let's go on Luna, and then we can uh, maybe try and blow her up. In a different scenario in which you have Warlock Egg, uh, sorry, not Egg, the Golem, <laughs> been playing too much Phoenix. I feel like that's doable but in this game where in this situation where you didn't have chaotic offering she just gets repelled and that's it game over like you can't fight so at least they get a tier two but aegis is reclaimed in 30 seconds and i'm just, this lunar is gigantic for what was starting zero and three on got the juice one, three, and two. Top net worth. Most farmed in the game. I mean, Riddies has not left the Lunar side. <laughs> they are just... This is almost like a reminiscent of like an Io plus your carry combo where you're just always sticking together. I mean, Riddies isn't soaking up that much experience, but wherever you see the Lunar, you're expecting the Omni Knight is pretty close by. Yep, he's definitely that kind of a hero right now, and he's gonna have his Solar Crest as well on top of all of that to, to help out with. Um, this is one of the issues that Tiny as a hero has, in my opinion, right now. Like, this hero has always been the bane of every support. I'm gonna jump you and blow you up no matter what, uh, at any given point in the game. Like, he can't kill a position 5 at the moment. Like, he jumps this Omni, he's got 2k HP. On top of that, he's gonna have Solar Crest and 200 gold. You're probably not killing him. How... Okay, it does look like they're actually tipping back on Danny Lines, but no fight's going to be had. How big of an issue is the lack of nullifier going to be at some stage for, for Danny Lines, especially into something like the Guardian Angel? I guess you can get it on Wind Ranger, maybe. Maybe that's an option. Like, if you really wanted to and get the nullifier right, like... Probably not, like she's going for a Daedalus build, so what's it gonna be is most likely Daedalus and maybe Aghanims afterwards. Um, but maybe that's an option. I don't know, Nullifier became such a big deal since Tinker. Uh, of course, it was, it was always a good item for certain situations, but ever since Tinker became like constant pick Omni Knight as well, I feel it grew in value. Need those ways to be able to dispel these heroes. They have a very good observe ward inside the lane, so potential opportunity for dandelions. They're slow to come down though. You know, the doom is a little bit away from the team. You've got the toss that just came through the portal, so it does look like Navi Jr. is going to be able to make it back to the safety of their base. And this game, we will continue to see no real action recently. It has just been, you know, the early game. Dandelion's playing incredibly aggressive. Die did a great job to be able to slow down the momentum and, and build up an even game. But they are continuing to avoid, feeling like they are not strong enough at the moment. Both teams uh, don't feel too comfortable fighting. And both teams kind of... I feel like it's more Navi, right? Just dodging them and, and buying themselves time. And uh, it, <laughs> on the other side, you have then the lions running after them, trying to to make things happen. Um, yeah, like this centaur pick, I kind of brushed over him when when he was just picked. I, it's okay, centaur offlane. I see with Dark Willow, all that stuff. But the, just the stampede has been completely changing the way the game is played, making it much much harder for the the lions. They are going to try and force a fight though, Na'Vi Jr. It's the first time they've really been the ones proactive. Yep. They're going to be running to a, a lot of vision as well, set up from Danny Lines. They're not currently playing around the observers, however. Mm -hmm. They're going to go in, into vision, like you said. And honestly, I feel like their big timing, their like big power spike... I, I don't think, let, let's put it this way, I don't think their power spikes are linear, like I don't think they just grow uh, stronger over time. I feel like there's a point in which dandelions are actually really strong and it might be this, like they've got two crits, small crits, one on tiny, one on uh, windrunner, it might be enough. Got the juicy showing. They're gonna try and jump the real Luna, toss him away from the Omni Knight if they got the 
the damage before Britties gets in. They will, without a doubt, with the Doom committed on the carry. That's all their net worth. The Mimo Nande on the back line. The damage for the Wind Ranger forces Riddies to try and TP out. He'll make it. PMA, unfortunately, will not have the same fate. So, all right, the call from them, the Dandelions, they say, okay, Luna gets so incredibly farmed. That's okay. We would use every single spell to deal with your carry. And mm -hmm. then what do you have afterwards? And you know what? The best way to deal with Omni Knight is to either silence him, stun him, or get the carry away from him, which is what they did to Luna this time. Just toss her back. She can't even... Uh, okay, he was out of position. Like he felt way too cocky, way too comfortable there. He was out of position. And this second rush is kind of a bigger deal. Uh, it looks like they might lose it. Uh, and it's not only Tiny, keep in mind. Like, if you click on Tusk, Desire, he's actually going for Aghanims. Oh, wow. So, so he wants to do the same exact thing. And trust me, like this Nande uh, Wind Ranger, she will wreak havoc in the back lines or on Luna uh, once she gets this Daedalus. Like the, the small crit on her and Tiny definitely made a difference in this last fight. But once Daedalus is picked up, like, you won't be able to uh, kite them the way you have before. So how do you take fights then? Because we're seeing a very kind of obvious game plan at the moment from Radiant where it's actually just toss the front line, a toss the Luna, mm -hmm. or kick her away from the Omni Knight. What, so it seems like, do I just have to be super proactive or do they just need to position better? Is it just simply like that? Uh, they, they're going to wait for this Kanda on Luna first, but I feel th this might be again a little bit grim for me, but they missed uh the po their power spike they there was like this moment in this game like five minutes long where centaur was a big bully and they couldn't do anything because of him a radiant couldn't do much because of him but navi just decided to move s5 and farm the map sweep the map instead of trying to force things i feel like maybe that's a bit of an oversight from them but we'll see um luna is definitely scary if she's allowed to hit so Maybe that's the play. Play around her a little bit better. Set up the next fight in a way in which God the Juice doesn't get tossed back. And then it might be a different story. Well, we do see a Blink Dagger is queued up at the moment from Riddies. It's going to take a while for him to get there, but he... That will help him, of course, if the Luna gets tossed back for him to be able to close the distance and just overall with his positioning so he doesn't get caught as well. I, I don't know. I, I don't think that's the solution. Like jumping in even even deeper with Omni to save the Luna, I feel like if she's tossed back, the the fight is done already. Nande? This is not a bad angle from them. It's really good. Nande's got the ages though. So Jesus, all right, he's gone. He's got BKB for the second life, but they're going to be able to set the formation up. Mobe forced to jump in to try and give Nande a little bit of time to retreat, but finally, Dia, they are the ones on the aggression front. They're the ones that are pushing Radiant back. The rock's gonna get dropped down along with the doom. Maybe Nandi. Radiant's ultimates <laughs> can turn the tides and look at the damage. All of it comes uh -huh. through from the Fatal Bonds. The Luna dies in a heartbeat down to the south as well. PMA's gonna be caught out too. They should have the Infernal Blade. A little bit of that percent damage to prove to be an issue for PMA. It'll it'll take them a while. PMA will make him work for it. He's gonna try and TP up, but the stun will be there. So in uh -huh. the end, it's gonna be a two for two. I, what, actually, was there a buyback? Uh, was about yeah, the Desire bought back and she did two deaths on Wind Ranger, basically. Uh, by the way, she killed herself. It was just a blade mill damage. Happens. Yeah, I think it was it the happens. blade mill damage in the end. That's maybe it was some AOE from uh, from Primal, but I think yeah, it was mostly blade. <laughs> it's one problem that oh, this hero has God. got. Yeah, I I, I think it was. Uh, losing the Aegis as cheaply as they've lost it is an issue. I feel like having yeah, yeah. that Aegis in the hands of Indrunner just allowed you to do so many crazy plays. Um, but then again, it put you in this cocky position in which you're so... Uh, you, like, he read it well. Like, he you even used Windrun to connect to his team. But he read them going from the north, not from uh, the east. So, um, yeah, they got him. They caught him off very nicely. Overall, I really like this. Yeah. Oh, sorry, go. No, 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 you please. I was just going to say, I really like the adaptation from Nanda. He's got the Satanic queued up. Yeah. Uh, we, we saw, I think he was finishing the Pike and going to the Scepter, but the Satanic, 
is somewhat of an answer to the your blade mail and retaliate yep. damage. Yeah, it always was, right? Like it was always just to just get some life steal so you can at least mitigate the damage that you're dealing to yourself. I don't think it will be enough, but it might be just good enough for him to reset at least. Could you? I was gonna say, could you Vlad's on Warlock? Do you want to go extra life still, or is it just pointless if he's going Satanic? I'm I'm a big Vlad's enjoyer right now. I don't know, they, like a lot of teams, uh, players aren't valuing the item as much. I don't know. I, I like Vlad's. I feel like it wouldn't be that terrible. It's just that all the other other items that they're getting are just as important or even more. Like, especially the agonims on Tusk. I, I feel like that's something that they definitely need. If you're Doom, you're not buying lads. Like, you, you're a big boy. You're getting big boy items. Are those big boy items are being purchased. I mean, AC is currently queued up. I know you were speaking about the Shivas inside the draft, so... Yep. Uh, that is one item he has. We even see... Uh, the Refresher was what I wanted to bring up. Mobe is actually going for this next item, which is a little bit... It's definitely creative. I mean, earlier on than maybe what we see on some of the late game, like tiny refreshes. Do you like it? Mm. Maybe that's that's the answer to this Luna. Just blow her up with a refresher. Have the double BKB in these fights as well. I'm not sure I'm like super enthusiastic about this refresher. We'll see how it works. Um, but there's a big item completed on Luna, by the way. It's the Lincolns. So, she doesn't want to get uh, doomed, if nothing else. And not incredibly easy for them to get rid of the Lincolns as well, so maybe Doom's going to have to change as the Alpha Wolf at the moment. They are smoking over to the far west side of the map, where Nande is currently positioned along with Kadaro. Dude, so that would just be a second short. These small little things from Radiant, it's like... <laughs> Let's just see this fight for a smoke. Can they connect? They're in the low ground. Smoke's gonna pop. Yeah, they're He's a backing. little bit away from the team as well. Yeah, this is awkward positioning. Nande's actually gonna run aggressively up to the high ground. Nande! Forced to use the BKB early on. Great timing before the hoof stomp. It's looking a little bit awkward. Nande, he's going to have a difficult time of actually entering the team fight. And Navi Jr. recognizes this. Unfortunately for Niku, very obvious on the onslaught, so they're able to retreat before that one does connect. But this is... Maybe they actually just try and force down the T2 tower? I, I think so. I think so. Without BKB on uh, Windrunner, I think you should. Um, it looks like they might even want to... Rotate behind with the tiny. I'm not sure where he's going. Is he gonna farm? Yeah, he's just farming. They're they're sacking the tier two. By the way, before this fight started, I want to talk about the bonus damage that they have on Radiant. Vlad's is something that I would like because of that, if nothing else, uh, as well. Like your Doom has pack leader Zora. Like he ate the wolf. Like you don't see it as much, but he ate the wolf. Like 30% magic. Uh, sorry, 30% bonus damage on your heroes for Wind Ranger. Then on top of that, you got drinking buddies from the Tusk. Like, the only way uh, to play against this is to actually buy blade mails. Like, <laughs> make her kill herself before she kills you. The damage that she's dishing out in these fights. Whew. You just melt. Yeah. We have seen, though, like... Uh, I don't know if that was a great example, but we did see, like, Nande when BKB was on cooldown was very hesitant. To, to enter that fight. They were obviously calling calling quits, not wanting to try and take that engagement. So this could be a, a, an opportunity where this Wind Ranger is very kind of timing reliant on like the focus fire and BKB. And if you don't win the fight in that combo, then maybe yep. there is a, a window for dial. Well, uh, our observers are showing us the tiny as well. Eventually he becomes an additional beast when it, uh, when it uh, comes to the damage department he's got the kanda he already is kind of like he can jump in blow a target up and maybe reset do it multiple times especially with a refresher bot lane it seems like they want to fight but doom is not here oh, just doom, yet yeah. got tp will come down ac just completed so what's gonna get a clip of mobe Cardamouse will continue. Dandelions try and force a team fight. 
How Jute. can you say otherwise? They want to try and back up and get control of the Roche area. This game is such a How tease. How fast will it go? <laughs> <laughs> this game is such a tease. So many smokes not connecting. So many smokes oh, just breaking and everyone coming. running. Mm -hmm. They're coming. It doesn't seem like the Roche is fast enough. Mobe's ready with the blink. Smoke's gonna pop. Jump to the high ground. And then join the clips onto one. They need to get eyes on Roche. It is falling low and they don't know this. There's the reveal of the scepter, but do you really want to call the primal base? Nico turns. Look at Nande's health pool. Nande in some danger. Satanic's going to be activated back to full. Now all chaos will break out. It's got the juice. It's trying to enter the team fight, but the Luna can't find an angle in. A beautiful power shot. Snipes down the primal base. Another kickback PMA up on the high ground in some trouble and got the juice. He'll kill the warlock. Cool. That's just the support. That is not the real target. That is not the hero that will win them. Mobe. The team fight is Mobe. Gets to jump on the high ground. He was waiting ever so patiently Ooh. in the trees, but got the juice. He's going to try and stand his ground, but will not be able to do so. A TPR cut short. Nade gets the rampage. <laughs> it is a complete wipe as Danny Lions. They bring the fight to die at the Roche pit. How crazy is it that you can just press one spell that's on six second cooldown on that Wind Ranger, use your ulti, and just run around, de deal 10k damage. Like, you're untouchable, everything is missing, you have BKB as well on top of that Satanic. Just run around and dish out 10,000 damage. 10k at this point. It's it's just ridiculous this hero is something else very nicely done overall by um, dandelions though it looked a bit scary at the moment kicking uh, like when they were doing it kicking the primal beast back i feel like maybe they should have committed to one thing or another they were kind of i don't know navi jr they they weren't fully committing to one thing or another they didn't finish rush and they didn't really take the fight they left Rush yeah. with like 10% HP and also the fight wasn't really... Uh, like they didn't commit with, with the blade mills, with the BKBs. Instead, they got kited out. Uh, let's see if they're going to give Megas up. Don't think they're going to fall incredibly fast. You want to force the fight. Luna's up in five. And Dandelions will stick around. Ages in the hands of Nande. Be careful about that blade mill. Niku, no hesitation, going to chase the Wind Ranger down. They oh, are PMA. out, but PMA does want to let them escape. Turns with the Doom, but there's going to be full up there. Kickback. Dino's going to be killed off. That's no buyback available for the mid laner and Navi Jr. Now Mobe gets the combo to the back line, disrupting the heroes from Navi Jr. Got the juice. He just cannot do anything. The Lunar is trying, but look at Nade just beelines to the back line. What are you going to do when the Wind Ranger is up in your face with this much net worth? You've got some buybacks, but it's going to be too late. Mega creeps have been claimed. Maybe they can take a fight on the retreat. The ultimates are on cooldown, but I don't they even know if it matters in the end. You've still got the ages. I want to go back in. They have to pass the refresher over to Yayo. And there we go. Second Doom out. This time it's going to be used under the Centaur. And the combo is back up for the Wind Ranger. And we're just... This is a perfect showcase of... The strength of this hero, it is still yet to be patched, and we are seeing how ridiculous it can be in team fights when she goes unaddressed and dandelions. Yeah, they're gonna be able to take game one. They had to work for it in the end. They had a early net worth lead to start this game. They ran through the laning phase, but it took them 44 minutes to get this game one victory. Yeah, the laning stage, um, for me at least, painted on this very bad wide zone in a draft there's like a tempo controller mm -hmm. and an active person maybe that's just what they really like on on niku in particular and you know what like th this is something we talked about earlier and these teams they are more about uh, comfort zone than um, the absolute meta so there's also that like you'd rather play a hero that you're really comfortable with in any matchup than a hero that you aren't comfortable with in a good matchup which i also absolutely understand and um I don't have anything against that. I think this is a pipe game for Visage as well. I, I don't think you yeah. go anything else. I feel like you need a pipe immediately on their side. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how much damage Bristol is going to deal with Fatal Bonds uh, come mid-game. Like Fatal Bonds and Aghanims on Ande might be a bit scary. And look at this movement actually. Either side's Dandelion. 
Nande's kind of face checking the higher ground, but everyone else actually runs to the right side. And I thought mm -hmm. maybe there would be a fight up top, but Danny Lines they don't continue with the Brissa back and Navi Jr. will actually sneak into Dyer's jungle. So maybe everyone's gonna do the same and we'll get no fight before the horn. Nande, no Nande. Okay, I mean, okay. that's <laughs> don't do that. Yeah, he just he just broke the smoke, it's fine. Um like usually you want to take this level one fight on visage because of soul assumption you usually win it and they have visage and sniper but i still wouldn't feel too comfortable taking it just because how tanky they are on navi jr and they also dish out a lot of damage early on yeah it's a ridiculous amount of damage from navi jr and like you said that's where the pipe you know, is going to come into play for for the visage so uh, Palantima saw Yayo had a really good performance last game, 9 uh, sorry, 9 and I think 19 for, for the Doom, so we'll see how he can perform on the Visage, which is definitely a bit more of a difficult hero. It's not Doom, but it's definitely not the yeah. Doom levels of easy gameplay. So where do we, like... Oh, top lane, PMA, okay, first blood. You were speaking about, I think you were more kind of alluding to like the mid game team fights with the Bristle back and the Fatal Bonds, but we already see it come into play early on. I think last game, Kadari went Shadow Word level one, so this time actually with the Fatal Bonds early. I don't know what you're talking about. This is exactly what I meant. I mean. Ah, yes, apologies. Sorry. I'm just supposed to make you look good. Yes, you meant the entirety of the game. No, no, I definitely didn't think that they were going to get, especially without Snot Rocket, I didn't think they were going to get the, the first blood that easily on PMA. So, uh... Everyone's yeah. dying. Holy crap, everyone's falling low. Yeah. Nico, he was dominated last game. I hope that he has a better laning stage this time around, but I'm not sure he will. I don't think Puck is a much better matchup than the Tiny. It seems like this hero has been, with the change to the NA and it getting buffed a little bit as well with the with the B patch. I mean, we're just seeing like these specialist Pucks like use the innate so perfectly. Yeah, it's it, it can be very annoying. Move. Okay, he actually had to shift into a tower just to get away from Niku. I think they so far top lane not looking that amazing no. uh, for <laughs> Navi. Is he just dead? Yeah. Okay, had a big stick. Sorry. <laughs> like, dude, what's he doing? He's running up to the wave on no health. I think he was gonna die, but I didn't see the one. Yeah, he's got a wand, he's got a salve as well, he's gonna heal up. Go back into the lane, but Sand King, honestly, he's supposed to be winning most lanes or doing well. And then you can stack up for him. He Even if he loses the lane though, you can just stack up for him. One thing that, uh, one lane that should be doing much better is this bottom lane. I feel like Visage and Sniper are making one mistake. And that's the spam on Morphling. Like... He doesn't have CS at least. He's 6-2. Well, that's good. But I think they could have been getting kills if they spammed Riddus. If they were spamming okay. this Lich with Soul Assumption, I feel like he dies. But uh, spamming Morphling, he just shifts down and heals up. And <laughs> then you kind of waste your mana. And you see it's three minutes now, so the raindrop instantly bought from Got the Juice. Yeah. Uh, and none for the Lich, but... We'll see. I mean, you've, you've kind of maybe whis missed a bit of an opportunity there potentially to, to get a kill. Maybe it changes though. You've got two-point soul assumption now. Second level coming up in the shrapnel very shortly. So maybe that extra new mm -hmm. could be beneficial. Oh yeah, it, it, it definitely does change things. Um, level two soul assumption, level two uh, shrapnel. That kind of new cube, I don't think you can just shift down and heal up after that. It hurts way too much. Okay. Be able to clear the wave. Uh, really, I know we're speaking a lot about what Niku is going to be able to do with the, the Primal Beast as well, but eyes on how he can look to uh, put some impact in top lane and, and apparently bottom as well. He's going to come down, pick up the water rune, pick up the bounty. We'll see if he will continue to maybe mm -hmm. think about a snipe on the Yayo along with Desire. And he, he will did come the, over. Yeah, he did the same move last game, if you remember. They are baiting. Desire is that. 
Now this is much much better because if you remember last game he rotates in, doesn't get the kill, stays five and a half. Uh, when it comes to levels, it, this is still isn't amazing for him. Like Puck is uh, pushing in mid lane, you kind of lost the wave, but it's a nice little kill to get. And again, like top lane, you need to be keeping attention on because we're seeing PMA. Uh, he's getting dived. You know, level one Burrow strike really going to have a difficult time with running away and. This will be the thing from Dandelions. They will be looking to try and dive the Sand King, and maybe that will be an opportunity for the Primal Beast to potentially TPE and, and you know, punish them for that over-aggressive play. Yeah, but uh, your, your mid laner never has resources. That's one thing that's a problem. Like, after rotating bottom, like, he had to rotate top to get the rune, and it's kind of, he's kind of too low to get there. this. Okay, I mean, they use everything to get the kill on the Lich, and I thought God the Juice might be able to get a return kill. Should now with Daze teeping and with the Scatter Blast from afar, maybe they want to go for Desire next. Cookie is available if they're going to be able to catch him out in the trees. Desire steps down to the south. They should still be able to run into him eventually. Daze with a leap over to the low ground. A nice rotation. Navi Jr., a much different start from them in this second game. They're going to be able to find two kills down bottom thanks to Snapfire's involvement. Yeah, much, much better. And this is, um, like, one of the bad things that you... that can happen when you're playing Visage if you don't uh, crush this Morphling by the time he gets Raindrop. Um, this lane is no longer easy. Yeah, yo, he even rotated mid. I'm not sure... I guess securing the rune or something. Um, the, the problem is, like, I actually think they can't lane very easily down bottom anymore. Even versus just the Lich and Morphling, I feel this lane is hard for a Sniper and Visage. Like, Lich armor and you just go on them. Because you have these raindrops. They didn't crush you before the raindrops and now the lane is... Um, much simpler for you. Mid lane? Fuck. It's a pulverize. They were thinking about trying to take the Ancient stack just with the Warlock and the Puck, but lacking a little bit of the damage. And importantly, they dropped the Observer Ward down there. So, of course, full uh, full read that this is PMA's location where he wants to go back and try and farm. We'll see if they're going to be able to contest that. We do have Wisdom Rooms. Looks like this time it will be a one-for-one. -one. Last game, of course, we saw both of them going the way of Dandelions. Yeah, Niku rotating bottom again, but uh, they are under vision. This ward will be scouted by Ridis. So probably not going to work. Needs to go back mid. This is like one of those uh, situations where maybe a top lane rotation from Primal Beast would come in handy. You can secure your stacks, maybe even kill off Nande before he hits six. And yeah, he TP's top. They're gonna try. So you've got Kadaru behind. Level three with the Warlock was... Oh, level six just got it, in fact. It's not gonna matter potential with the bar strike, but the damage coming through for the Quills, they're gonna be careful. Oh my god. Oh my god! Oh, there you go. That's the... <laughs> that's the Fatal Bonds. That's the Fatal Bonds plus... <laughs> uh, plus Quill Spray. Right there. And you're gonna lose the stacks in the end. And... Yeah, yo. I, t to mention really quickly, I, I think it was the Black Room War. He popped it just mm -hmm. before they, they entered. He was level 5, so used it for the 6. I think that's why the tips are going out as well. So, uh, incredibly done from Kadar. I mean, that is great timing for him to be able to use the, the facet, get the 6, and wow. Yeah, uh, it was very nicely done. Completely turning that Primal Beast uh, rotation on them. Yeah, but they rotated everyone, by the way. Literally, even Sniper and Visage came in there just to clean up the stacks, of course. But I feel like this is probably the best that Yeo could have done. Like, laning bottom, you're... This is a problem. Usually, your offlaners are supposed to... Mid lane? Wow. E okay. Okay, but... Are they going for him now? Yeah. We'll break the coil. See if it's going to be enough damage with the two, and it looks like that should be the case. The Frost Shield... Only going to mitigate the last little bits and maybe days? even turn for days as well. They've got another stone. There's a possibility to hold him down, but I don't think anyone else is really going to be able to offer some assistance. Maybe Ridis puts himself on a platter. Yeah, that... Again, Mobe's lacking some of the resources. Yayu is actually continuing to sneak behind the tower, but not to be. 
might be a bit too much uh, in the end. Uh, but I like what they're doing. They're pressuring the map before Sand King can play. Uh, killing off this primal beast after his aggression was nice. Um, TPing in. Okay, just to defend the tower. They don't have level 6 on Daze. They don't have level 6 on Lich. Navi, they're facing the same problem they had last game. Their supports are under-leveled in comparison to the enemy team. Really hoping you get their sixes at a fast timing before the pipe comes through from Yayo, because this is something that you were mentioning, like the Visage really would love to go for this item considering all the magic damage he's going that for Navi Jr. going to be playing with. I'm not sure what he's going for, but he's got Vitality Booster uh, queued up, so it's either, what, Crimson or maybe a... Uh, Maybe an Atos. We'll see. Okay. He's not going for. I expected a pipe, but. but yeah. I, isn't there some crazy timing with pipe and scepter on Nanda? I really think there is. I feel like it's a game-winning time timer for them. Yeah. Especially versus these heroes. Like, look at these supports. Lich. Uh, Wait, Mobe jaunted. It's fine. Oh, maybe it's not fine. Mobe. Okay, a little bit of a mistake actually coming through. <laughs> yeah, good job, Days. <laughs> you forced yeah, yeah. that mistake. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He hypnotized him. Yes, yes. He manifested. He's not gonna jump. Oh. He's not gonna jump. He's not gonna jump. That's what happened. Yeah, I feel like I see, one thing that did hurt Navi, right, uh, uh, the stacks being lost. Like, the stacks being lost prevented the supports from getting levels, and now you're playing with... Okay, okay, at least Snap is closer. I feel like this Mortimer's Kiss is huge this game. A lot of dots versus Visage, a lot of long-range damage versus Nande, and then Lich Ulti as well. But they're not there yet. One person who's had a bit of a quiet game got the juice. One zero two. Seem farming actually pretty aggressively past the bottom tower that is being claimed into the right side of the ancients. So is pretty high up there in net worth. Unfortunately, unable to keep up with Nande, who mm -hmm. set they're getting delivered. Still has yet to take the stacks as well inside his own triangle. Yeah, I think it all comes down to um, their power spikes and when these heroes come online like yeah you can play morphling with vlads you can even play with vlads manta but you're not gonna do nearly as much as a bristol will yeah, bristol they're is gonna make going... the go on got the mm -hmm. juice this seems pretty difficult though how do you even start nande from the back okay well that'd be the call nande is gonna be able to stop got the juice and they need some tps they're gonna need them quick got the juice brought down low we're trying to Escape, but Kadaru is going to be in. There's the turn though, and the ultimates paying dividends. I mean, a lot of AoE, but it's not going to matter. The Fatal Bonds, once again, this Warlock, man, it's just so much AoE damage that they are unable to address. No one dies on Dandelions. We saw them fall low, but not uh, enough on. in the end. Uh, uh, okay, so one mistake that they didn't have the primal there. Like, that that's bad. But overall, I feel like that fight... Almost in any different scenario besides Bristol, you win it. Like, you, you actually take that fight on Navi Jr., you win it. But Bristleback is... He's got Aghanims, he's got that heal on him, and he's running through them, like, not dying, even though... Like, they were out of position. They committed everything on Morphling, and Morphling kind of lived. And then uh, they had good Sand King ult, good uh, Snap ult. Just not enough damage for the Aghanim's Bristol to die. Yeah, he just oh, does a man. lot at the moment. And I'm just watching a Bristleback go back after a successful team fight, farm the triangle and be 8.6k net worth. I mean, Nande is gigantic. Yeah. He's, he's so far. He's got that shard queued up as well the hairball we'll see if he gets that at min you know, soon enough he's gonna get the wisdom rune oh my god nanda is huge not just him i mean this is also a game where you know mobe as well it's almost got the blink dagger completed pretty shortly and it's not the easiest game for them to to get a catch on to mobe see how much disaster can ensure from a coil into the fatal bond so far i mean kadaru level nine so everything's maxed out for him 
You're also, I mean, Atos completed from Yayu, and like you were mentioning, that pipe. Maybe there was a bit of an opening here. Radiant might have one more chance with using their ultimates before the pipe, but see if he, how quickly we're going to get this item on the visage. Yep. Uh, he's gonna get it really quickly like visage is that kind of a hero especially if they force the fights because he's got the death toll facet so he gets more than he should out of all of these fights a lot of gold gonna be picked up by him but really the two heroes that we have to look out for are the bristle and the warlock like that's all they need on the underlines <laughs> they can 2v5 this game just that's how fat bristle is pop that shadow word on him fatal bonds and just let him rip and then you surely add a potential bloodstone onto that as well for nande mm-hmm what would you like them to do though for dandelions at the moment because we've seen you know maybe it's been a couple minutes now where no one's been posturing too aggressively do you want dandelions to potentially force like roshan do you want to just actually run into a triangle by the yeah, looks of it on nande yeah you, you you just can't force it pma he's got the bloodstone so he'll be a bit more difficult to uh, kill yeah nande can can nande do this okay like you'll get the kill but no one came through I was thinking maybe there might be some teepees, but the Primal Beast, I mean, that was on cooldown, was lacking mana as well. Your heroes down bottom, Snapfire, I think he cancelled his teepee, but they just leave the Sand King to die. This is going to be a tier 2 Tau that's probably going to die as a result of an... Uh, to add on top of that, Salt to the Wound, there's a DD as well to be claimed for die. So just more things going their way. Yeah, I'm not sure why they uh, just let the Sand King with Bloodstone die that easily. I feel like that could have been prevented. Or at least, uh, it's hard to take that fight because Puck had shield rune. But, uh, and yeah, Niku, once again, he did not have resources on the Primal Beast, so he couldn't really engage. Triangle? They're TPing PMA in. He's just gonna farm. I guess the, the playbook for Radiant right now is get the Blink Dagger on Sand King and play off of that. That's how it looks like, at least. They aren't ready to fight. Yeah, but I'm just concerned on if there's going to be a lack of damage or not. With the pipe and the bristle back in front, you know, the glimmer cape and the heals. You've got Solar Crest. Desire hasn't gone for this more of a greedy sniper build on the support sniper. I think there will be. I think it's, it's a big problem for them. I don't think it's going to be easy for them to take any of these upcoming fights, but maybe some magic from the Morphling can happen. Uh, Sand King can surprise in these fights. Like, he's a nasty hero. Uh, probably on the offlane, in my opinion, right now, the, the best. Um, sometimes even on mid, of course. He's the one I, I'm, I'm mostly afraid of, let's put it that way. Um, well, what, what is it? What's the combination of items till PMA gets like this? All right, now we've really got to worry about the Sand King and what he can do. I feel like uh, Blink Dagger and any sort of a reset, like he's going for Yules, and then suddenly he jumps in, uses his ulti, and um, with the Bloodstone and Yules, you can't finish him off. Like he's gonna always heal up. Mm, but he needs to be kind of ahead. This is crazy. We're yeah. trying to sneak Roche. They're, they're seeing them. I guess T2 Tower gets claimed as well. So not an easy read. Maybe they saw someone TP up, but the scan will go red anyway. They started yeah, to retreat beforehand, but not a fight, which could have been disastrous for them inside a close proximity area where dandelions were ready. Yeah, one problem that you do have with Sand King is uh, this Dust Devil, this facet, um, the Sandstorm, uh, you can always see it. Like, you can see it in fog. So you can kind of, at least I can, I don't know, maybe I'm hacking if I am Gabe and Banry, okay. but I can always see the fog, uh, the, the sandstorm, sorry. Wherever he is, like, it follows him and I can see it, even if I don't have wards or anything, it's just slowly moving on the map. So I can kind of have an idea where he is. Sure. Oh, looks like Vershawn's gonna go the way of Dive, we were already speaking about some difficulties with at least in particular, Nande being killed. Now he's got an Aegis on top of the Bloodstone. 
Maybe they might be able to get the T1 tower mid at least. Niku does pick up the Arcane Rune as well. Is going to be working mm -hmm. towards the Scepter with the BKB not completed. So, importantly, they are getting some items. We'll see. I mean, this network lead, it's not growing out of control. Kind of similar to last game, but it was around this stage of the game where they were able to claw it back and make it much closer. This is really going to be the difficult time, though, where you're grouping up, your pipe is about to be completed, you have the ages. They're, they might just force high ground, and it looks like not. He's just beelining not? up for it, so they're going to yeah. have to come back. Yeah, why not? Why not? I, I feel like it's a much different game, though. Even though it's only 3k advantage, I feel like the 3k on Dire is much, much higher than even the 5-10k that they had in the last game. Um, did they get the... They have the BKB on Niku, so... Maybe if you can cut the back lines, it's possible. Won't be that Pim simple. Is blink is... I going to say getting cancelled. Here comes the backline stab, though. Got the juice along with Niku. Smoked up. Going to try and charge him forward along with the help of the Mortimer Kiss. There's a lot of damage on the Desire. What a power strike PMA into the middle. Connects on three with a Chain Frost. Isn't enough, though. Nande will stand his ground. The Chain Frost is doing a lot of damage. Two heroes gone from Dandelions and no casualties just yet for Radiant. They still have to go okay. through the first life from Nande. This big bad beast of a Bristleback is not an easy kill. They should be able to do it the once. Can they do it a second time, though, is the question. He's going in. It's going in. <laughs> oh, all right. I, I thought he was running away, but Nande's in. And he is now out. I, th I, I really like their um, side cut, the, like the way they initiated was good. Also, what was really good is Niku and the way he waited with the BKB. I don't know if you noticed, but he didn't pop the BKB when he initiated. Even though he couldn't kill Sniper because of that, what happened is he baited out Warlock Sulti and then he used his ult. Then he used Polarize. I feel like one thing that Visage needs, and yeah, I click on him, he's queuing it up. One thing he needs is a reset. If he had a shard this fight, it all would have been so much different. Because you don't die in one Polarize, you pop that shard and then you fight afterwards, together with the second life of Bristle. Um, so yeah, maybe, maybe a little bit too much to push that high ground. Even though they are very scary, they're, they could have waited a bit. Days. It's actually going to be Niku here that they jump inside the river with the BKB. Niku's fine. I still expect it to try and get away, but they do, of course, oh. have vision on the primal. He's going to try and TP out. He should be able to make it. But maybe an opening for them with the BKB used. Tier 2 tower mid lane could be vulnerable. I feel like um, my eyes are on this shard from Visage and on Kidaro and his Warlock ulti. I, I, I think that he needs to be a bit more careful in this game on uh, how he uses it in the next fights. Even though that last fight, let's be real, they were pushing high ground without any vision on the triangle. Like they smoked from the triangle. Everything was perfect, just perfect for Navi. I'm very impressed with Got the Juice. He's doing a great job to keep up on the more fling. Definitely helps now with that Manta style completed with all the extra camps he's been able to farm, but you know, aggressively clearing the northern jungle area. Well, Dyer going to take a tier 2 mid, so he's keeping up. And I mean, the Sand King, like you were mentioning, has this reset with the Yule Scepter. Going to be going Shiva's next. You know, we'll see how much he's able to do inside some of the team fights. So, Again, Na'Vi Jr. have weathered the storm, and we mm -hmm. have... Pr I mean, it's 2,000 net worth lead. This game is pretty much dead even. And it comes down to, like, how does the scaling mm -hmm. look? Like, oh, this person back, I know, maybe a couple of years ago, scaling used to be a big concern for him, but there has been some changes. How do we feel like Nande is going to be able to compete and Dandelions as a whole once we get towards the later well, stages? I wasn't sure when they picked it into Morphling. I feel like as the game goes on, Morphling is okay against him like not the worst carry and he's gonna have that scuddy as well on morphling so you'll have some damage into the bristle to prevent him from healing up but uh, overall bristle is a hero that definitely scales well at the moment still like, I, I feel like okay. you you can do a lot with him and it's not only on bristle keep in mind you have this puck he's got full octarine core witchblade going for parasma maybe some Someday he's gonna get to that agonims, you know, like he's gonna be dishing out a lot of damage too. Um, 
and yeah i like this like visage he, he wasn't sure what he was getting like he was switching through items but i like that he went back to the agnim's shard but wilford's sure but i want to see the shard and then the shivas the two smirk underneath that observer will throw from radiant place on the cliff there's full read from Navi Jr. of what's going on. They're even going to scan just to make sure at least the trajectory of the smoke. Back off. So got the Juice going to be able to complete the Scotty. Everyone else just hold up inside the base. Making sure they give no opportunity for them to bleed a kill. This game is exactly like that for them, right? Like just wait and uh, wait for your items. Play as defensive as you can. I think Navi are happy with having uh like some super long game especially because you have the morphling hands down how many other carries would you like in this super late game scenario than morphling not too many yeah it's one of the best and you also have like i mean we spoke about in the draft right but the primal beast scepter mm -hmm. so this is now very shortly online from niku where this is Maybe the value that they were potentially hoping for out of the dino. So we'll see. They are Read this. really aggressively positioned on the die side of the map. Got the juice kind of splits away. It's going to be a TP cancel. Looks like they will not. Hmm. Yeah. One one problem that dandelions do have is like the two supports. Unfortunately for them, the sniper on position four uh, just brings very little at this point in terms of catch. So you. I do like I, I do have to commend Desire. I like the adaptation. I've seen this not only from him, of course. Uh, I've seen it from a lot of position four snipers since TI. They stopped going for these Gleipnir Dragonlands. They just go Bracer Solar Crest, and then you buy whatever your team needs. I think that's much much better. Just Why? to be. Okay, I'll hold that thought. Niku. Niku, yeah. One stun, second stun. To the visage, but PMA is also posturing really far forward. Uh, they want to fight. I mean, Navi Jr., they're going to get caught in the back line. Though. Both supports can together. We're going to see the combination come out with the core and all the AoE spells. They are gone really before another fight will break out and the cores have a hope of entering. So nice catch from Mobe. You know, he gets a glimpse of them mm -hmm. inside the low ground, sees an opportunity. Everyone else follows up to provide the damage required. Yeah. Um, I... I thought that that was maybe an opportunity for Navi to take a fight because they were positioned very nicely with Sand King and Primal Beast. Even though their supports were kind of caught, I feel like they could have cut them from the back lines, but okay, they decide to wait for their items. Uh, because of that, they might even lose top. Let's see, at least the range Raxes, I feel like, uh, will fall here. At least. And not much was used there from Dyer. Maybe you're happy with forcing when Cole's back up. BKB's there. Yep, pulverize used, not a long uh, cooldown anyway. Yeah, you're happy to resummon the familiars. Yeah, but overall, you just lost two supports and you lost range Raxes. Mm. Not sure, not amazing, but you can still fight. Morphling is very ready. Now they got the support behind him. Mobe once again gonna jump the back line. And in a close proximity area like this, it's gonna be difficult. Once the Fatal Bonds gets laid down, it hasn't been used just yet, but Nande's gonna force them back over the defender's gate. They have left Niku behind though. Niku's gonna be fine with the PKB. They'll try and turn with the breakout. The Bristleback's in some trouble. Activates the Bloodstone. Nande gets the required sustain to keep him alive. And now PMA, he's in no man's land. Has the reset. They're gonna be able to avoid the Bloodstone to help get that bonus Nandé. health back. But Nande, there's an opportunity. The Bristleback over the right side. Gives them an opening now. Navi Jr., can they capitalize? Got the juice trying to enter the fight. But the Morphling not doing enough damage. They're kiting the carry. Meanwhile, we're going to see the Bristleback go down. An aggressive waveform, but he's in trouble. Double orbs. They will chase. Or they will not. Very close. Mobe was thinking about going in. They want the barracks instead. Are they eyeing up for a fight. Got the juice actually. Jumping the visage with the silence. It's going to stop the stone form to be up surely with the pipe bomb cooldown, the damage mitigation. It's not there just yet. PMA with a double bar strike perfectly done. 
an opportunity for raiding. Can they get more as well? Mobe's TP, it'll be fine. He makes it out in the tree line. They'll lose their full set of barracks, but they'll get a couple of kills as a result at the end of that skirmish. Yeah, like overall, I'm not sure where to put this fight. Was it a win for Radiant? I think it was, even with losing the Raxes. They didn't commit any buybacks. Morphling was alive throughout that fight, and he's gonna have a new item. Sand King as well. As this she was completed and Morphling, what, a BKB, I believe, is flying out to him off of that one fight. So overall, I think you should be satisfied if you're Radiant. Not that bad. Um, what helped them a lot? That wall helped them a lot. Like <laughs> That wall on the left side, the ramp, like they couldn't... Uh, Bristleback, once he popped the BKB, he couldn't follow through. Uh, the Golem was used as well and they just... They reset by walking through the wall. <laughs> that, that was a bit nasty from uh, from Navi Jr. Nicely done. Um, of course, we need to s speak about the new items on Yeo. Like, he's got Shivas now, so the Morphling's life will not be as easy. Sand Kings as well. This Bloodstone isn't going to work as well as it used to. Rick on smoke. Mobe inside the lane. This eyes in a very awkward position, but the double bar strike, can they blow up the park? They're gonna try and use everything to get rid of the squishy mid laner. And now Nande, he'll be fine. Activates the BKB, charges away, but this is the fight that they need to get more out. They've been waiting for an opening to bring down Danny Lions, and looks like they'll just get two, but a great opening from them. The initial stun onto the park with the chain control now opens up Roche for Navi Jr. But yeah, then the Lions, uh, they were <laughs> very patient in the last game, but this game, I'm not sure what's going on. Like, they went in with this buck, they, they were smoked up, they wanted to take this fight, but they didn't have Golem. Like, that was the problem, like, this buck only dies if Golem is not uh, online. He needed 10 more seconds for uh, Chaotic Offering. If they had Chaotic Offering, he could pop it on top of Primal and puck is free, but, uh, yep. Not this time around. Two thousand net worth lead. Now you got the ages on to got the juice, and holding the Roche's banner as well is Snapfire currently. So once again, I mean, last game was you're, you're pretty close. We're seeing this exactly be the case though. Two thousand net worth lead at the moment from Dandelions, but the tides have turned. Yeah, looking at this game, at the moment at least, I'd much, much rather be on the Radiant side than on the Dire. And uh, I didn't really feel that crazy impact from Bristle in these last couple of fights. He will be getting level 20 soon though. He needs, what, one or two creeps. Well, that level 20 talent might come in handy. But the Juice has got Tejas. Gonna try and force the fight before it. They've isolated the supports away from the Morphling. Obey doesn't have anyone extra there to, to help with the coil, so they're just gonna try and TP out. Any stuns? No, no stuns. So, uh, what was looking like, honestly, a great opportunity. Mobe once again, is able to find these, your backline heroes, but the Morphling also got caught mm -hmm. by, by Nande's Bristle, so he wasn't able to get there. They intercepted him, but not a fight they were able to take in the end and maybe get some conversion kills out. Yeah, maybe something Desire can uh, do is save his ult. Like, he's constantly using Assassinate first to to just dish out the damage to kill someone, but then they just TP out. They've caught the supports many times and they weren't able to kill them off, so maybe just save it as a mini stun to cancel a TP. As they just lack Shadow. in that department. Hmm? Got the juice is going Silver's Edge. I mean, he's got Shadow Blade. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, versus Bristle, right? Versus Visage as well. Speaking of the Bristol, Nande is a bit away from the team. Well, they're going to throw a rock and maybe have an idea that something's going on. The formation is not great from Dai, though. You got one down to the far south, which is Mobe. The three squishy heroes trailing inside the lane, but they will not continue the chase. Navi Jr. may be a, a little bit more cautious without having any vision, so they're going to go back and try and shove out mid. Will they smoke here, or are they just going for the Tormentor? Just the Tormentor. Okay, actually Yeo even going for Gleipnir uh, next, just for that extra catch on, on Visage, but so far, I have to say, even the Atos wasn't used. 
You know, like, I, I haven't seen this Atos successfully catching a target once. Um, why? It's because Puck always jumps in far away from him with, with the blink, and then he can't even get to, this, get to the place to use it. Not the juice. Oh, very close with the silence coming through from Obey. We have Not the juice. He's in a very awkward position. Got the juice. I mean, that is not a lot committed for the ages. And now, Renit, you gotta do something. Coil held in. BKB. More things gonna try and turn. Outputting the damage required. They're doing a good job to kite them at the moment. PMA created chaos onto the back line, but the sinking now potentially vulnerable. But the blood's soon about to expire. Maybe they can turn to him afterwards. There's this quick silence on the park, and park's gone. Mobe, I'm gonna buy back there. Now they are even turned to Nade. Nade in some danger. Is able to charge back to the safety of his own side of the map. I mean, it is chaos inside the team, but it's a die back on the puck. Mobe, what? what is going on? Navi Jr., they are capitalizing. A big opportunity for them. PMA, he will not even die inside the team fight. Nade wants to go back in with the Bloodstone bonus health. It's not enough. What is going on? Got the juice. He'll reap the rewards. That's a triple kill for the Morphling and Danny Lions. Some big mistakes made. Ooh the dieback from the puck hurts they do have three buybacks and sniper but well, the game might not be over just yet but it is not looking great for dandelions i don't think everything was great from both sides first morphling dying the way he did just giving away away the ages sand king yeah he jumped in the back but like he just made like you said chaos but i feel like more chaos for his own team than for the enemies as he was getting really damn low without bloodstone without epicenter even ever being used uh, but the main and most important uh, piece of action was really puck dying twice if he bought back and then he doesn't die they easily finish off the primal beast and most likely they take that fight with the buyback but uh, this is looking really really rough right now for dandelions silver edge completed on morphling bristol will die even faster yeah he is struggled to find that next set of item for the bristol back i mean he's every everyone else is, is not able to keep up at the moment and puck was was farming incredibly well but that die back into death we saw the fight down bottom to give up roche as well there was another death for mobe so, I mean, there were some things that could catch him out this game. You got, you know, point targets done with the Sinister's Gaze with no cast animation. I think even got the juices, I believe, been doing a really good job to play with the puck and actually silence him as well, which has been mm -hmm. catching him off guard. So, you know, we're going to have to see some adaptations coming from them inside these team fights. Desire, though, timing out of the grenade. They do not have everyone, and Radiant are actually starting to TP and PMA. Maybe looking for a blink opportunity. Won't be able to catch up those dice. Should make it back to their base, and they will. Yeah, they do see Mobe uh, on top lane. Just trying to split a bit. He does have a TP. Might give them an opportunity to pick off someone. Yeah, they're just stuck in their base right now. Visage and Puck trying to... You know what, what my issue is? Like, I see the CAO Visage is farming. And he's trying to get something out of the map. But he's farming a Gleipnir. Like, I just don't see that item making a difference. You know, like, all of these items that I'm seeing, maybe Puck's Maelstrom is the most significant one as he'll be able to dish out some more damage in these fights. But... Even that isn't really that convincing for me. Aghanim's being queued up by Sniper. What's Warlock doing? He's got Boots of Bearing. I, I, I don't know why Radiant doesn't have them, by the way. Nande? Nande? To just the different status of this game where he has to use a BKB like that. He is very concerned for his own life. That's usually not that great. If you're playing Bristol, you don't want to be uh, using it like that. You want to be using it in the last minute when you're finishing off targets. You heal up, you bait them in. But like you said, it, like, he doesn't have buyback. He just purchased Refresher. Let's see. Maybe, maybe this is something. Monday. We know. Oh, man. Oh, man. Are they going to... Okay. 
goes to the. Oh, 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 I'd seen peeing up the load. Yeah, yeah, hang on. They're pinging. Okay, okay. Not gonna go. <laughs> oh, they're cutting. Okay, so Visage is just cutting bottom. Yayo is yeah. also farming inside the, the, the lane. You see Mobe as well being a huge pest. So they are just trying to avoid as best as they can. Yeah, they're just buying themselves time because right now it's impossible for them to take these fights. Might have to soon though. Mid lane pushed in. They want to try and go high ground off the back of this. Yeah, the problem for Bristol right now is item slots. Like he, he's fully six slotted. Like he can drop the boots maybe, but <laughs> it's not that great. So he's going for Agony's blessing. They're gonna go on this. They don't have the Sand King at the moment. Can boots will travel into the wave, starting to poke down Niku, maybe trying to force a reaction, but they will not get one. Yeah, I'm getting some stacks from uh, Bristol back as well before the fight starts as well could be uh, good for him. Stack up a little bit of quill spray, then go in afterwards, but... Mid lane? They caught the puck inside the mid lane! Phase shift, is it going to be enough in the end to get him out? Goes down to the south and... Obey will make it out. They're still chasing. Wheelie, though, they are chasing. I think he's out. Far yeah. out. They're getting way too close to get the puck this game. Yeah, but I guess that's the way you have to play at the moment if you're puck. Like, you have to create some space. You're cutting bottom, cu cutting top. They are doing that very nicely, but... Uh, sometimes you have to ask yourself for what <laughs> you know like on one side you have this morphling he's almost level 25 satanic completed together with scuddy buying a refresher of his own i feel like he's scarier than anything that they can pull up with um come late game their gems is really interesting from the other side Rady have incredible vision at the moment they do see nando spit out some goo He's gonna try and chase Rudy's down. They know, they know, they're prepared for this. But they are. This is the fight you want to take. Sanking's gonna TP into the outpost. They yeah. the high ground. They are starting to get the goo stacked up. Jump on the back. What an opening. What an opening. Visage gone. Kadaro blown up. And now with the bristle is in some danger. Nando's able to charge away. They wanna fight this? And they, Obe pops out of the tree line. Kidaro. Trying to do his best to poke, but yeah, again, they've got the back line. Morphling really proving to be a bit of an issue. Niku as well. This is so messy for Dai. Like, the formation is broken. How are you going to be able to protect the support? I mean, left up to the north. Nande's over to the east. Like, they're just avoiding the Bristle pack as Desire. best as they can. Bristle's finally able to lock onto Days. Meanwhile, over to the right side. They kill off Desire. Now Nande... He is by himself, fighting over the Lotus Pool. They're facing in front of him, and he's just gone. Not what is going is. on? Uh, this is just, it seems like the, it's impossible for them to take team fights at this stage of the game. They have just completely missed their timing. And the boys on Navi Jr., they can now look to get Roche on. This will be third Roche for them. Yeah, this is absolutely a disaster for Dandelions. Straight into the pit. Refresher, cheese, ages. A very tasty rush to take as well. A snack for Got the Juice. Who deserved it? Like he made all that happen with the Silver Edge. He rotated in, kill off the Warlock first time. Completely broke their formation. Visage as well died immediately with him. A Visage that's going for Kanda next. I honestly, I just don't see it. I, I don't, this build for me doesn't make any sense anymore. Uh, I don't see it working. Uh, you'll just get blown up the same way he was in that last fight. But most importantly it's a question that you made before the game before the fight started where are the gems like this all happened because they lacked vision they didn't have the detection for for god the juice and like, he just used silver edge and completely broke your team fight apart yeah that even uh, just helping our support's position with you know, guaranteeing wards on high grounds i'm uh, very surprised but not seeing it uh, any gems honestly from either side to be honest but they're at the stage where navi jr i mean you have this 17,000 net worth lead and they will not look back i mean you've had pretty much firm grasp with this game now for the past like 10 15 minutes and 
all Dandelions have tried to do is just cut the wave, and Niku's going to run into Mobe. So no one else is going to be there. I mean, we're seeing the damage from the Primal Beast, though. Meanwhile, as well, I think there's something happening to the north side of the map where we should get a kill. Yayo will go down on the Visage. Now back over to the puck, Niku. Gonna be able to catch up to him, Mobe. Very slippery here, but maybe not slippery enough. Niku might get him. Mobe goes for the TP. This. Oh, <laughs> man, Niku. I mean, we were, you know, question marks in the Primal Beast, and it's picked yep. this game, but, dude, we've seen throughout, you know, the mid to the late stage, he's really providing a lot of chaos and a lot of damage. It's very difficult for Dandelions to play into this Primal Beast that's up in their face. Yeah, he was done with this puck uh, creep skipping. And also, uh, I like that it was Snapfire that got the kill because he's, I believe, buying a Hex. So that will, th these kind of split pushes will not be possible any longer. He's got a Wind Waker as well. They're going in. Maybe an opportunity if they can bring down a Warlock. They'll force the buyback on a Mobe. Happy with that. Got the juice, of course, no concerns. Eight just another two minutes, 40. Nana's gonna try and go in, but you gotta be careful about the Sinister's gaze if Riddy's get close enough. They might not even need it to force him to turn around, because Niku? Niku's gonna be into the middle under the tier four tower with the help of PMA. The net worth lead is just too overwhelmingly high. Niku's gonna be able to eat the cheese back to full. Got the juice as well. They'll surround them in their own base, Navi Jr. It was looking like a, another difficult start to this game, but they stabilized and they should be able to take this one in the end. I mean, Puck is really trying to make him work for it, but back inside the base, in fact, inside the fountain, got the juice. We'll get our last kill of the game, and we're going to be going to a game three of our first series here on the Ember stream. Very nicely done. This, after all, is El Clasico, right? <laughs> um, sort of, sort of. I'm What's El sure. Classico? What's going on? What am I missing? The Navi will combo with him very nicely too. Like you've got the Mars Rubik, like you can rotate to, to them. Versus Morphling and Treant, you can also rotate to your safe lane. Uh, really freaking out. Really freaking uh, you can also rotate to your safe lane. Mm, and help out, help out your Morphling. Like, help out the Centaur, help out the Morphling. Like, you can go on both of these lanes. Well, we are gonna see... Like you were saying, you're probably they're gonna run to top and start cutting down trees. Radiant don't bring everyone though, which is sometimes what we have seen when a team is versing the tree protector. And Navi Jr. are actually gonna try and look to defend their safe lane early. So maybe they might be able to get a catch on to Yayo if they are lucky enough with their position. Let's see, let's see. He's pinging. They're pinging him out. They have the ward as well. But this is. Get the cross. Oh. Uh, that PMA wants to go, but I mean, you got telekinesis level one. Does it matter that? Mm, it's kind of nice. I mean, he has spear, but it's not like God's rebuke. Yeah, it's only ten more mana. I don't know. No, I, I mean, getting lift level one is actually pretty. It depends. Like in some lanes, you can work with it, but I'm not sure how great it's gonna be this game. In any case, it's not great. You'd much yeah, rather yeah. have Fate Bolt. It's just like how much will you suffer for getting that yes. uh, level one? Because often, if you have an, an offlane who can't secure last hits, right, then you, you're really gonna yeah. have an issue. Or potentially, if you you really need Fate Bolt level one to trade, um, which to trade to get the range creep as well, like a lot of things. This tree and hurts quite a lot, but maybe lift is good here. You know, tree goes after you, you just lift him away. We'll see. They get the D ward on top lane as well. No, not bad. Okay. Oh, what was the bounty rune department? Okay, two for two. And like you said, Daniel Line's getting the D ward. It's a huge D ward, by the way. He gets a quarter of uh, a level immediately on, on Rubik, so he got the solo exp, which is very nice. How difficult does top actually look? Like, this is... Is this just a free lane for the Morphling? Like, if he gets to maybe, like, level 3? Or are there... Can you put the pressure on with the Rubik and the Mars? I feel like you can put the pressure on Treant. I'm not sure if you okay. can really pressure the Morphling. I feel like Morphling is a bit more difficult one to kill at any point. Maybe if, if you catch him uh, low on level 3 Rubik and then you Fate Bolt him, maybe you can kill him off, but... 
You can't really pressure him out of CS, I feel like. Okay. Um, we see bottom lane, Nande, on the Luna, second Luna that we've seen so far throughout this series. A couple of other heroes that we've seen a lot uh, so far as well, with Snapfire along with the Centaur. There has been some, a lot of people mentioning about like a ranged melee pairing is something that we often see, but you're going to get the double range here and we'll see what Kadaru is going to be able to do. Of course, his hero's laning stage has been buffed up quite a lot, especially with the innate. See how that's going to feel for Kadaru. Yeah, and I feel like he's not really a ranged hero. <laughs> I mean, he is, but like this Shadow Demon is like very low range and kind of plays uh, very similarly when it comes to trades. PMA, gotta be careful here, like yeah. disruption, a couple of more poison stacks. He's, oh, they're actually gonna go for the kill, so maybe he's recognizing PMA is not gonna escape, but they don't commit and now Days, no, he's fine, no banishment, but a lot of resources used. Of course, they'll be happy with that though. Kadaru is gonna be able to find first blood. I'm surprised they didn't see it because it was obvious from long range that uh, it's a misplay going in with the centaur this luna and shadow demon like usually with centaur you actually pressure lanes but yeah. that's the strength of luna right now like she maxes out lucent beam it's not very easy to uh, play against her you see they do have sticks already from days and pma because this is going to be a very spam heavy lane because they got that kill, we're seeing a bit of a power strength go their way. So Kadari's going to be able to get the Lotus top lane. It looks like Riddy's does get the Lotus, so... One. Nande. Yeah. Will he live? He will live. PMA, however. I think he's going to garner. No. Will they live? As well. No as well. Okay. Just maybe, double maybe. kill for them down bottom. Oh. There's a... <laughs> that's, uh, at least bottom lane. Playing. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, oh, I don't know, dude. This is three games in a row. Like <laughs> the lanes would not look good. And uh, at this point, I'm questioning: Is it really the um, the mechanical skill, or are they just setting up their lanes in a way that isn't good for them? Nico, oh my God, doesn't even get the bounty rune. This is so sad. It's gonna have enough mana for the roll, though. Yeah. But it's like, e even this mid laner, you know, like Niku, this is three games in a row where I see him. He makes some yeah. sort of a rotation very early on, either for the bounty rune or for a uh, kill. And it gives Puck all the space. Mobe gets all the space mid. Plus he loses a full wave or something under the tower. I'm, it never feels worth it every time I see it. Oh, this is back-to-back -back games as well where he had last pick. So yep. uh, we're seeing Mobe have another free game. And the free game was looking good for him previously in game two, but then, you know, it can be the issue with Puck. It's a very, uh, you have to play it on a knife's edge. And if you get caught, then all right, you know, it's, you're probably not escaping, but you know, sometimes you can look like uh, an incredible player if that does connect. And again, yep. though, this move from Niku is they, they scan it out. He's scanned, yeah, it's even scanned. And they have a ward, they'll see him. It's like, I, I feel it's all correlated to the fact that they're losing the side lane. They're losing the side lane, which allows Shadow Demon to rotate mid and get the ward. It also forces this. Man, look at the response. Oh, it's just, they were ready for it. You're always going to be able to banish into the TP from Mobit. He's not level 6, needs one more creep to go down. Gets the 6 down, maybe there's an opportunity to catch Daze on the retreat. He might still go in. He might go for Niku, actually. Who's gonna go? Niku's looking for the, the kick. They'll go for Daze instead, land the coil onto two. PMA's been able to close the distance onto Nande with a decent amount of damage onto the Luna. Nice, oh, block. nice block. Just steps in. Kadaro keeps his carry alive. And now, with that interception, PMA might be in some trouble. But the Dream Protector will TP down. But Kadaro, beautiful block from the Shadow Demon. And the disruption, by the way, he disrupts the scent and blonks, blonks, blonks the earth spirit. Uh, very and stacks done. and gets the bounty. <laughs> yeah, this guy's this guy's balling. Kadaru oh. is is doing. Is the, he's feeling it. This is the shadow demon you want in your games. 
This is, uh, yeah, this is the high level stuff you see in the, the highlight reels for the, the supports. You know, make those plays, go back, stack, get the bounty. I mean, this early game, this is... And it's looking good. It's a good start. Yeah, the lines. Three games in a row, I feel like, are winning the laning stage. Oh, are they gonna get Niku? They got the damage. Let's see. Another round of spells up thanks to the Arcane Rune. Yeah, He's Niku. Uh-oh. Is... Riddy's... Coils in five. He's... Okay. Yeah, he's got healing low to sticks, raindrop. They can go on him just because they have, the, have Arcane Rune, I guess, if they wanted to. PMA? Might even go down bottom as well. Nande's going to be able to find another beam. Poison not enough, but Nande with the nighttime should be able to chase him down. They will lose Kidaro. Oh, the miss. Nande, can he get him? Oh, oh the miss. They... Crazy. Oh, wow. He missed the, the low ground hit. It didn't connect on the centaur. That's why he managed to live. And also nice little... PMA for me is MVP of, of Navi Jr. Like, I, I, I feel like this guy is... Um, having the most impact in all of their games so far out of these three games that I've seen. <laughs> really is, <laughs> difficult to hide. They will be able to find it, potentially lacking some of the damage. Niku's struggling a little bit. Not going to be able to connect and TP. Is that the Morphling's TP? Yeah, yeah he doesn't have it anymore. Niku is not level 6 yet. I, I won't call that struggling a little bit. He's got brown boots. Fluffy hat, level five and three quarters, like not six yet. Midas time? <laughs> I'm not sure what time it is for him, but it's not a good time. Because one thing I want to mention really quickly, because the action we've had mid and bottom is just top Mars and Morphling being left alone. So. No one's really coming out on top. They're both free farming. I mean, you see Mars 47 last hits, Morphling 53. Who does, does this kind of favor someone, the fact that both of these heroes are free farming? I think it favors the team that's doing more on the other side of the map. Doesn't really matter a lot on top lane. It matters a lot for bot lane, for mid lane. And that's where the Underlions are uh, doing a bit more. I don't think like Morphling in this matchup you have to bring the puck to kill him, and th that's what they're doing right now, so... Maybe they can make a difference. Even uh, Shadow Demon on the Twin Gate, maybe even Nande, like, they they might go all 5, yeah, they're gonna go all 5 for that tier 1. Looks like maybe even Nande's a little bit hesitant if mm. they're making their own play down the bottom. In case he doesn't want to get caught out. Didi's gonna be active for Mobe to help them bring down the tower, so early on trying to put pressure onto the objectives against the train protector. We will see bottom though, like you, you have some forces down here on Navi Jun. You're gonna have one support on days. Niku here finally the magnetize. He's wanting this urn charge though and hasn't been able to get any of course. Yeah, they've got stampede, but diving Luna against the Shadow Demon is a scary prospect. Like you, you just cannot do that. Not to add the tower at least, maybe a bit deeper. And their spirit, he just decides not to. He goes back to farming mid lane. Be a very difficult test for Niku on how he's gonna get involved in this game. I want to see how far he's fallen behind. Really was hoping that maybe he could make these movements to the side lanes, but Radiant did a great job to be able to slow that down. And. Oh. We'll actually connect onto Mobe, but with the shield rune activated, Mobe's not in danger. Will now wear off, so the damage is start starting to tick through. Ooh. It was a nice lift. Uh, he attempted to break the coil, but I, I feel like coil just disappeared, so he doesn't get broken. A lot of damage, but like kiss. Way. Yeah, okay. I mean, Mobe now looking to run forward. I'll be able to deal with the Mortimer Kisses, but Mobe is committed with the spells and the Stampede's actually going to help them close the distance So Niku. I mean, we were saying this guy was wow. potentially in a... You're going to have a difficult game three. We're like, how is he going to be able to find impact? But he finds a triple kill. He's only a little bit behind the Morphling's net worth. He's got three urn charges and level eight. He is back and so are Navi Jr. That's like the best case scenario ever for them right there they ate that magnetized they just wouldn't fall back because i guess mars was around and they wanted to force a fight but 
So honestly, they should have just backed. Buck lost the shield rune, Rubik lost his life, and they just took 3000 damage from uh, Earth Spirit at minute 10. Like 3000 damage was dealt to them. He was the only one dealing any damage really in that fight. With a little bit of days, Zulti, Mortimer's kisses came in clutch just a little bit. As, <laughs> so crazy how it feels like all the games have kind of resembled each other where Dandelions have a pretty good start to the lanes and, and then they, they, they get it. a bit of a lead. And then, yeah, and then, you know, something happens when Navi Jr. like, you know, stabilize and it's... Maybe this is a little bit earlier than what we've seen in some of the other games, but it's a 2,000 network lead, and they're the ones now looking to try and make a move. I mean, Kisses is still down, but you've got Magnetize, hoping that maybe you're able to catch the Luna farming deep inside the jungle, but Nande's already uh, backed far enough away, so he will not be caught by the smoke gang. This, this man didn't get a single rune on Earth Spirit so far. I feel like every rune, Nande. I'm gonna make the attempt, Nande. The team is starting to funnel in the area, but Nande will try and output as much damage as he can. Banishment will buy him a moment of respite. Nande's still going to go down now, but the Kisses lead as well. Create some Mars artillery. See what Mars going to be able to do, though. Roll Niku gets out, and well, not much Mars can actually really do to impact the tail end of that team fight, and that's a big kill onto Nande. One that they were looking for for quite a while with the smoke, and it converts in the end. Who can he even use the ulti on this game? Like on three and, and I guess Snapfire. It. Centaur, of course, if he can get on top of. But he, you can't catch their position one or two with Mars, which is very annoying. Maybe a blink kills is an option for him to secure these uh, secure these kills. But yeah, like Niku getting that triple kill just completely opened up the game. He got. Uh, he got the blade mail. He's actually able to farm with the blade mail as well, which is what he's doing right here. Uh, yeah, kicking days a bit. All right. Yeah, we got, we got a ball game. Very even. And again, another game where got the juice has been pretty silent, but of course farming incredibly well. Second in net worth. Morphling getting a lot out of the map with the Vlads into the Manta style, and that death on nine is going to slow him down a little bit you know of course this is a luna who does farm incredibly fast especially like you said with the changes to the skill build that we're getting out of her but we're, we're gonna have to see because the early game you really would now favor earth spirit with how he's able to dictate the pace compared to the puck like this is still a hero that mm -hmm. needs a little bit more yeah i just want to see what he does um because, like, in the last two games when he was playing Primal Beast, it was kind of understandable that he wants to go fall back and just farm, uh, especially the way the games were going. I feel like with Earth Spirit, you don't necessarily ever have to stop, especially if you're bowling out of control, like if you're uh, getting uh, a triple kill like he just did, or that kill on Luna, I feel like you can just constantly make plays. So, Let's see, he's got KB queued up, but... I just like him to continue making rotations. How does this hero actually scale though into the later stages? Like when, because you have this facet with the the bonus attack damage later on, your, your strength game is is relatively high. We we see late game the magnetize can be a lot once the BKBs start to get lower and lower. Yeah, I feel like he, he scales better than he used to, but you need to still be getting kills. Blade Mill actually does allow you to farm a bit better but overall i feel like if you are not getting kills with third spirit if you're not pressuring the map you're playing the hero wrong we are seeing the kind of grouping up multiple heroes towards this bottom side with days and niku really is the, the two that have been staying hand in hand so if niku ever sees an opportunity days will to be nearby to be able to provide that extra follow-up damage if they're lacking it. They will get a D-Ward, which might help out with the potential fight around mid. They're going to try and continue to occupy this area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they uh, warded, but it's under vision, so... Rubik gets it. Um, yeah, they've been playing so far, just them more or less. The two of them were making plays. I think Centaur, yeah, PMA is now joining. He, he's got... Full blade mail, blink dagger, like he can actually help out, maybe pressure the steer one mid and open up the triangle to stop Luna from free farming.
game slowed down. And this is favoring Gradient at the moment. We're seeing this net worth lead now continue to build up a bit. 3,000. It's caught up. Manta style almost completed. Where Dyer is still trying to force the issue. They're just hanging around with multiple people. Niku trying to see if anyone is inside the tree line. Kind of see the difference with how they're posturing their forces. Fine. Surely they should be able to get this iron. Yeah, that'll be the case. Reveals himself with a fade bolt. They're going to jump over the top and finally get the kill. But no creeps and means no real tower damage. And Radiant, we'll see if they want to try and bring some heroes to defend it. Pipe is completed on Yayo. I feel like you can just go in like this. Yeah, they're just hitting it. The creeps, of course, have arrived. But even without the creeps, I do believe that they can take it down. Oh, Lincoln. Oh, have they gone a bit too far though? They're gonna be quite cautious. Coil, arena, everything used under the blade mail target. They should be able to secure the kill with the damage from Nande. Now aggressive waveform got the juice. Is stuck in the middle with a cookie. Tries to help him reposition. He's gonna be okay, but PMA. So he had to put his body on the line to get the morphling out. Riddies does the same as well, but Riddies offers his life on a silver platter. They got the spear. They cancel the TP, and that is just. Uh, unnecessary going a little bit too deep down for Navi Jr. and Radiant they were ready yeah Kidara once again um, being the perfect bait using disruption um, the, the stun connected I feel like that's what baited them in Centaur he is the one with the blink dagger that's supposed to be catching these you know like you're trying to play the game aggressively and someone is constantly killing the wave under the tower you want to catch that hero this time around it was the SD but uh, they caught him too far out. He was under the tier two, so you couldn't even dive if you wanted to. The Mars Arena was perfect. Um, and also they had haste on Nico, so maybe he felt a little bit too too safe with the haste. But Dream Call and Arena were both used on him, so. And now, importantly, you get a big injection of gold into Dandelions. Again, I, I know you were saying like, you know, Matchup late game is not incredibly favored, but still the Lunar is a hero who you know, can take over the map very fast if you have this lead. And you know, maybe there could be a stage where you're potentially posturing for Roshan. They don't, honestly don't have the greatest Rosh lineup though for, for Radiant. So maybe at least this just gets you potentially towards your, your BKB. Obey? Yep. Is there an opportunity? PMA, how do you start this? Maybe a silence from Niku. They'll get the silence into the hoof summon up. They got the damage. They do. Well done, Niku. Great timing on the silence. They saw the opportunity and they're going to capitalize. Yep, nice, nice wards. Like, this is how uh, they were playing the last game as well. Um, whenever a puck, puck is uh, a bit behind, starts scraping and buying space, even though they're not behind, they, they, doing, they, they catch him out, kill him off. Stampede, perhaps not super necessary there, but uh, who cares? They got a kill on the puck. Um, and when, when you talked about Rosh potential, much, much easier on Navi to take it. Yeah, especially the damage from the from the Morphe. It's here in particular. You got a little bit of minus armor from days, nothing really that much to mention though. Yeah, do you care that uh, Mars didn't go for Blink? Like he's going straight... Uh, Aura carrier, like pipe into actually just switched up from Shiva's into BKB. So, so pipe BKB on him. Um, I don't mind. I, I, it really feels like you're on a bit of a timing though, where I don't, you kind of, it just seems like you want to group up potentially around the Lunar, which I don't hate. And you also like Mars. I feel like you can have a couple of different play styles if you are versing a team that is very committal. Like, mm -hmm. Waveform in, Centaur Stampede, or Blink in, Earth Spirit Roll, but of course, I mean, it's a pretty low cooldown, but... Uh, and you don't really have anyone else to follow up inside the arena. Like, who's actually going to get in to get that damage? Which is, so, maybe they just feel like you kind of want Die to come at you. Like, put the Luna in in front, protect it with the Shadow Demon, then follow up with the Auras in the arena, and then take fights like that. Okay, yeah. That makes sense. I was just worried a little bit for them not to have like good initiation besides the puck. Sometimes it just isn't enough. And uh, they are close down bottom. Like more, he demonstrated the silence against puck last game. Redis is also around. 
Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, 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 I'd still rather have another hero that can start things off on Radiant. Like, Puck enough for me isn't... Puck alone isn't enough. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I... I'm not saying I necessarily agree with it. I, it's just... I you think can this see is the reason. Potentially the reason. Yeah, yeah I think this yeah. is just the reason. I'm not saying whether it's it's right or wrong. I just feel like this is at least his decision making, and yeah, you know, we'll see if oh. it's it's going to be the case. This with a uh, cool overgrowth on creeps. <laughs> well done. Yeah, two minutes cooldown. It's it's not the most impactful ultimate, but still, you'd rather have it for the next fight than not. No, oh, because we have a potential fight break here. You got a smoke on ready, and you'd love it now. Yep. I, I'm sure he wanted to write something that starts on R. You know, you press enter and you start ready, and yeah. you didn't press enter. <laughs> GG. Um, Nande wasn't smoked, so they saw him walking. I, I'm almost certain they saw him walking at Roche, but no pings and nothing come out. Do you feel like this is a fight they could have potentially taken? Uh, maybe I, 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 yeah earth spirit has a bkb though so i'm not sure i feel like they could have taken this pipe link on centaur without overgrowth probably not though okay <laughs> god damn it rudy's <laughs> up the overgrowth issues i hate to say it uh, let's see now let's see they have a lot of damage when heroes are pumped up. So if you can catch them in the pit and follow up with Mortimer's Kisses, with Magnetize, like, it's a lot of damage. Um, you might be able to take that fight, but you don't have enough control without the Treant. Oh, see if this move is able to pay off. They're going to put Nande up forward, maybe thinking that they're still playing behind him and... Look to smoke and TP across the map. No blink on Yayu, but it's going to be up to Mobe. Drags him back into the arena. Cookie will get them away from this spear, so the stun doesn't pin the Morphling up with the wall. And that'll probably just result in one kill on today's. Maybe even not. If they got the stuns, should be able to close the distance. Riddis is trying to enter the river, but there's no way you protect the snap fight. They want to take the fire PMA. And jump over the top. Got the juice as well. Playing into the puck. Right flick with the sounds again. Mobe's gone. And Aniku looking to try and roll to catch the backline. They'll get Kadaru. They're looking at Nande next. He's got the BKB. Might have to use it on the first life so he doesn't lose the Aegis. So what the call is going to be, not necessary in the end by the looks of it. Nande will be okay, but again, got the juice. This is back-to-back -back games. We're seeing the Morphling look to utilize that Puck Replicant and just get that first initial silence. And it's been huge. Yeah, it's been huge. But what's been huge... Uh, for uh, for them besides that just saving the snap for so long that they were able to counterplay that um, keep in mind that uh, dream call was used mars arena was used these are your two big ulties if they are gone like i feel like it's go time for got the juice and everyone else the earth spirit pulled in he's got the bkb so nothing really to worry about any very nicely done to uh, days and his death in the river. I was honestly like in my head when that fight was going on, was kind of questioning. Like I was surprised they were putting so much emphasis on trying to keep days alive and and at least maybe mm -hmm. make the kill difficult. But we saw what happened in the end. Like you said, I mean, they used everything for that, and this is now a game where we are back 1,000 net worth lead. I mean, at the most, it, it grew up to about 5,000. And importantly now, you were able to get the lanes in a good position where now Dandelions need to go back on the other side of the map. They will be able to do so now. So at least you're going to be able to pressure with the Aegis. You've got two minutes left of it for Nande. Can you take the tower down? Uh, three is very annoying with living armor, but Luna should be able to do it, right? Like Solar Crest on top of her, Disseminate as well. She should be able to get it. But I have to completely agree with you. Like, once he used overgrowth, I'm like, oh, okay, here he goes again. You know, overgrowth for nothing. <laughs> but yeah. nice, nice counterplay together with it. Yeah, very well done. I mean, maybe, like, Daisy has got grief. So, like, this is... I'm not, I don't want to say, like, unconventional, but it's definitely, like, 
Yeah, this is the nice thing about the Snapfire. You do have a lot of options you can go with your item build. And Double Bracer, Greaves, he's got 2100 health. He's a tanky man. And there's a Solar Crest and Living Armor yep. from Trient to dig on him. Yeah, there's a lot. Every support, every support basically right now uh, with Bracers, just way too difficult to, to kill off. Do you see regardless, so the enemy line's still looking to try and flex their strength. Ages out in a minute. So another T2 tower is going to look to fall. This living armor will only slow them down momentarily. We'll see if they want to continue to control the area, though. They've got a pretty good ward up on the triangle. But I have their own, which speaking of, will be dewarded now. And they're still buying themselves a little bit of time on, on Dire. They don't really want to defend any of the tier 2s. Uh, Shiva's is not too far away from Earth Spirit. He needs like 1600 gold. Not that close as well, but he can farm it up by the next fight. And on the Morphling, I feel like, what are we getting? Like the clan into Kadi next. Yeah, pretty much the same identical item build for the Lunar. Somewhat identical. Some of the early items, not the same. Lights into the Mask of Madness. But it is very similar between these two. Let's see. I've really been enjoying the series so far as a whole. It's been very competitive between the two. I mean, I know, you know, some of the, the lanes in the early game was uh, a bit more one-sided. But we've really seen some fight back from, from either side. And team fights have been uh, very entertaining to watch. I feel like this is a, a great way for us to start the qualifiers. Mm -hmm. No, for sure. Um, I, after the first game, I thought we might not see a competitive series, but I was proven wrong. Oh, no day. Yeah, tried to jump into the wisdom room. They'd already snagged that one. So level 20 here forgot the juice. Radiant going to be able to pick up their own. Looks like Nande will find it, so... A little bit of peace so far in this game. We do see, I mean, there's a, a trio of roaming heroes around the mid lane, and mm -hmm. looks like they're going to be able to spy out their target being Niku, but Niku, it's the roll away, and he's fine, so. Yep. They just don't have catch. That's, they're playing the game. Um, I feel like Dandelions, in all series, they win the, in all the series, they win the lanes, but then their movements afterwards either connect wrong or start aren't there like the rotations in game one with nande where he was just like mm, cutting his farm and not really getting any kills on winner and now you you kind of want to make plays but you can't because you don't have a blink on on mars yeah. he's got it now though it is flying to him and a much different game where a gem is picked up earlier here kidari is gonna get that one delivered so this is going to help out a lot with the positioning. They're actually going to try and come through the portal. Got the juices farming down bottom. We'll see if it continues. It's like might use the Manta and, and try and get away. So will they trail the Morphling? He's got some teammates posturing over towards the triangle. And maybe that's the direction Radiant want to take. Yeah, but it's 29.30. Like you could also just ward um, the Rosh Pit. Secure it. It should be daytime Rosh again, right? So... Something that you can maybe look forward Desire? Ooh. Yeah, I don't know if... I don't, did PMA see him? I feel like he didn't, right? Like, no, not sure. He got away. Alright, no fight by the power. But we're gonna see a potential fight there. You have this one on the high ground to maybe use though. I don't know if they saw Niku TP in, so smoke. Scan does go red, though. Red ain't gonna try and position themselves over towards the east, so they have another ward to place on the high ground because they are Fuck. trailing them. Mobe. Jump away. A little bit awkward there. They're gonna try and stamp it in the middle. They've got eyes on the Shadow Demon. That's a big target. Kidaru brought down to start the fight. And where is the Luna? They need the Luna. Nane's trying to deal with days. Okay, Nane assassinates one of the supports. Now looks to turn to Niku, but Niku... Will go down to the damage over time. It's not going to matter though. Got the juice, replicates into Luna, and with her own glaives, will tear them apart. Morphling just stands his ground, unable to address the carry on Navi Jr. And now they might even be able to get Mobe as well. The beam at the last second. Mobe, a short jaunt away. 
And he will be caught down PMA, able to secure the kill. I think it was a, a witch blade with the blade mail damage over time. And that's a five man white. Rosh will not respawn just yet, 30 more seconds, so uh, unlucky in that department, lucky with how that fight went. Luna, I feel like you were asking, where is she? What happened? Both Luna and Puck kind of started that fight very far away from everyone. Puck jointed old the secret shop, by the way, <laughs> and to rejoin oh, his really? teammates. Yeah, yeah, he, because he broke the smoke and he panicked. So he went all the way to Secret Shop and back. Runa, however, at the beginning of the fight wasn't bad. Like, like popping the ulti and killing off the support. However, the ending of her ulti was abysmal because uh, she based ham on Niku, who's, who had blade mail. I feel like she lost 60% of her HP to herself. Basically to the damage blade mail. And then Morphling just cleaned up easily. Uh, yeah, sometimes, you know, you, like, you start everything off nicely and uh, uh, a small lapse in judgment costs you the team fight. And it's a, a big consequence, though, for that lapse in judgment. This is now Roshan for them, second Rosh, so they're not. And they're going to try and smoke, but they will be too late on Dandelions. This Rosh is going to go the way of Dire. Do you want to see them try and take a fight after Rosh's claim, though? Oh, I'm not sure. They're gonna they're, be off. Yeah, there is absolutely nothing that they they have to wait for on Navi. Like they have all the spells, maybe Morphling's morph, but that's it. Like all the big are there, and it seems like they just want to go for the tier one top, tier one, two, tier two maybe. Let's see. Got already up there. I feel like this is when you feel in control. This is uh, the easiest objective to go for because it also opens up the tormentor the you to snatch. That Tormentor is still there. We are actually seeing Raiden start to send some of their forces inside the area as well. So maybe trying to look to force a fight even into this age's advantage that Navi Jr. are playing with. Yeah, let's see. Maybe they just want to defend the Tormi. I'm, I'm not sure, but Puck is deeping in. This will Eyes not be the a Scepter. simple hype. Does he got have Scardi it? completed as well. Forgot the juice. Yeah, Scepter is now delivered. Got the juice. Getting the Scardi delivered for the Morphling as well. Maybe they're going to back and wait for this. Very big item for the Morph. Interesting how much hype they've got, but uh, that respect is smoke respect. They just smoke up, go back in. Maybe it will be easier for PMA. PMA, Nani on the front line. They're all clumped up. They're going to run straight over the wall to Luna, but look at the damage coming through for the Blade Mail. I mean, they're going to run Nande down. They'll do their best. Arena makes it a little bit difficult for them to move forward. They got onto Kadaro at least, so the Shadow Demon's going to be killed off. And now Cop the Juice, he's still got nothing to fear. An aggressive waveform down to the low ground, but everyone else is hesitant. it. They're like, hang on a second. We need a couple of seconds to get our spells back online, and now we can look to jump in. The reinitiation's a little bit messy, though. PMA in some danger. Mantis off the hoof stomp. Nane's going to be fine with the jump in. Desire assassinates the centaur, but still, you're going to lose your carry. And when the carry's gone, the damage isn't there as well to follow. Navi Jr., it'll be a two for two. A fight where they had the ages advantage, but they'll be able to continue to get some net worth into their pockets with the Tormentor now, along with the T2 tower. What uh, kind of uh, uh, team fight riddle will do? Takes me outside. It's like as well with the Mars the arena I think it's the best that he could have gotten out of a bad situation because he was stuck in the trees in a way in which he got clipped by multiple uh, AOE spells so he couldn't really blink in and use his uh, arena properly instead his team fell back on the low ground and played on the edge which was also okay because Morphling jumped in um, like a bit I don't know um, a bit ham from him to lose the ages but still fight very solid by uh now, Junior, they take the tier 2, like you said, they come out on top even though they lost a couple of heroes and the ages. We are seeing this game start to kind of slip away though from Danny Lyons. Again, is put in a position where he has to try and create the chaos spot with the overgrowth on cooldown. Maybe they're going to be lacking, it's not an issue though. Orb used. They're going to get him. I mean, this is five deaths for the park. I mean, you've picked the park, you've, you've tried to put... You've really tried to put a lot of weight on his shoulders to, to bring them 
back and when they're playing behind for him to try and cut the waves but Dairy doing a, an incredible job to catch him at the perfect moment to get these kills. Yep, he was able to do that in the previous games. This one, however, uh, proving to be a bit more difficult for the split plays. And just full con got the juice. He's ready to. He's just ready to high ground at this point. See if there's going to be a response. So Danny lines 30 seconds. No Mobe. And it down. Completely negate the use of the glyph. Dara's going to do his best to try and stall, but how? What are you looking for? A speed back? Telekinesis? It's so difficult. Got the juice can always waveform away. They're going to go for the speed to stop and instantly the response. PMA followed up with Niku. Yayu puts himself on a silver platter. A little bit awkward there from Riddies, and it's a decent arena. Gonna give Nande an opportunity to try and enter the team fight with the damage from Eclipse. It's enough for one, but that's all it is. They just get one kill on and Niku spies an opportunity. Now with this Earth Spirit looking to try and force them back, giving Dio a window to potentially reset and importantly re-evaluate if they want to go back in, because Riddies, he bought back and all. He bought back, jumps in, gets the gem, and <laughs> he's happy with that. Yeah, that's that's all he needed. Get that jump. That was initially bought by Pearl. They form Satanic. They're probably going after that, right? Like they got the full side. Forced the full side. Uh, I feel like the arena could have been more impactful in that fight. Unfortunately for them. It, it wasn't like the BKB from Centaur and he just went away so the only guy that they did manage like you mentioned earlier to kill was Riddis. Uh, maybe the point is not to go on Morphling anymore or even try to kill him off just just go on the supports try to kill off everyone else and then deal with him. I, I guess that's the only way you can play this game because you're you're not killing go to juice unless he really makes a horrible mistake. Yeah, and it's such a fine line on the attempt to try and kill him. Because if you allow him to replicate into the Lunar, which he has, he's always going to be able to do with no Lincolns or anything, you're just seeing that with the Satanic. Got the juice, he's just going to be back up to full. Level 25 as well. And this is kind of my concerns about the Morphling Lunar, like we have just seen in mm -hmm. some of the fights where like Morphling will just waveform on Lunar, and Lunar's like, what do I do? I have to like run, I just yeah. have, yeah. I have a better version of myself on me, and this is—I mean—that has been the case for you know sometimes with a lot of more things and replicate matchups, and this is kind of the concern where maybe like you, know, you don't have a puck who is incredibly farm like Mobe. This isn't a puck where we've seen like you, you can carry games towards the later stages. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's really just a Luna. Yeah, he is trying though. He's going for his Maelstrom. He's got it now yeah. completed. He's also got Timeless Relic and uh tier four to get so m maybe some damage will be there but i i completely agree with what you stated and i'm not sure where to put the blame or where to find the issue was is it like the the way they overlap in what they are doing on mars and puck I mean, really sort of a burst damage from mid lane would have been better or just a straight counter to the morphling and his heals but uh at the moment at least it, it is on Navi Jr. to strike again. They're smoked up. Yes. We'll see if they can find that opportunity though, because this is the one thing from Radiant. Like still, you can use the Manta illusions, you can use also the, the Shadow Demon disruption illusions, the puck. I think regardless of Mobe being caught a couple times this game, I feel like it is still your job nonetheless to play the edge of the map and try and split this game to give them an opportunity for Nande to get Rapier. You're looking for Rapier and you know, I guess the Ag Shard, uh, and maybe that can give you a... I mean, it's only 12,000 deficit. It's nothing crazy, but definitely these fights haven't given probably Dandelion's fans a lot of confidence. Yeah, too many big items. Like, even days with his Ags, like, he can just toss in PMA or even the tree. Like, so toss in Riddus. Gobble up. One of the coolest spells, by the way, in the game. I love... It, it's not always very you, but... Just a cool concept. Yes, yes, it is very cool.
Uh, you got a great hero as well with the centaur. Gobble up, chuck him in. I mean, even if a save as well, which is crazy because he's got 3,200 health. So if there's ever a position where he can do that. And he's got a hex, by the way. So you can toss him on a puck and just eliminate puck with that. Like, Who that's your... Oh, okay, centaur, yeah. Yeah, centaur, yeah. So you can gobble, gobble him up, toss him in, use that hex offense. So it's a very difficult call for Mover to make now. Like, do I go Lincolns? Do I need damage? If I don't go Lincolns, this Hex now is, is going to be a big factor. Maybe you're praying for Kadaro. I'm not sure he even knows. Did that scan go... Did they scan? Because right, they're coming outside. They've got a great high ground block. There's the Hex into the puck. Kadaro, though. Perfect placement. It's going to be able to buy him a lot of time here with the banishment. So Puck does escape. Is there an opportunity to go back in? Ooh. <laughs> Someone lagged. Yeah, you could see okay, that. Okay, so what do we got? Um, um, Nane, unfortunately, is not there with the coil. He might be able to get there quickly enough, and you still oh, it's, you still got BKB for the for the Earth Spirit. BKB's been used, though, on the Morphling. Yeah, they can... Uh, uh, the Dream Coil is still there. Uh, uh, the problem is PMA with this hex he doesn't have a blade mail anymore so he can't really isolate or remove nande from the fight nande let's go ham here can pop the ult and just go he needs to go big he needs to go big here on nande pme will actually stun the luna so luna's gonna have a bit of a difficult time to getting into the middle of the fight with the overgrowth as well Riddies buy some time so luna cannot close the distance they're turning with the kisses it's not bad stolen from desire but it's just not enough Nande will go down in the end. The beams no. are bouncing back and forth. No. Desire is doing so much. This Rurik man, stolen everything. Kisses, double edge, using whatever spells he can. And somehow it's actually a, a, a decent fight for Radiant. That fight was only this a sick overgrowth. Like he caught Luna after the BKB and the Manta, and she couldn't move. She it's couldn't hit. Definitely like definitely if definitely. it was actually if it was actually there, if she was <laughs> able, to, like she takes the fight it was just the uh, enough amount of damage that was needed to kill both the centaur and the morphling but it wasn't there in the end yeah desire as well like you said like very nicely done by the rubik stealing the kisses double edge after double edge is also this it's a, a lot of damage with arcane supremacy but then again you still lose that fight and morphling is still in the pit He's got Swift and completed. That's Refresher, that's Cheese, Aegis. <laughs> I like that scan. <laughs> Just in case someone is going to jump in, look for a steal. Just do it at the corner of the map. Aegis will be claimed, like you said. Fresh is going to be given over to PMA. You got Aegis and Cheese on God of Juice. Who would we like to see hold the Refresher? Mm, maybe give it to uh, double hex from centaur is really good but i feel like they might give it to earth spirit in the end we'll see because really dying and i feel like niku dies after the bkb is not sure we'll see and refresher on him is overall very nice but just keeping it on the centaur would be completely fine in my uh my view oh man you'd love that diddy on the lunar just completed a rapier for Nande. So you will not have this. So one more attempt for them. It's only 11,000 lead. And with us, uh, so probability 70% for Navi Jr. But they feel like this is very desperate. You got some items though. Yeah, you're with Hex. Mm -hmm. What's Mobe looking at as well? Oh, getting close towards the Mjolnir. That's all without buybacks though. Keep that in mind. And the other side has Aegis and buybacks. Kidaro? Well, it's really a lot of them. But juice? We're gonna have to come back. The building's gonna fall. Oh, PMA. It's an illusion. JK, lol. Wow, that's why he's got a refresher. <laughs> Impressive waveform Hex? in. Hex, but it's awkward. They don't get the full combo out. He's still dying, though, with the rapier damage catching them off guard. But got the juice, was able to activate the attribute shift. 
you've got a buyback on a Mobe, but they're going to reset. Glob stolen. They don't want to let them get back towards the triangle, but no one is there to slow down the retreat. Days might end up dying with the damage over time. Yayo with the jump in. They'll get the snap fire. They're going to try and look for the Morphling next as well. It's a lot of damage, man. Look at the crits. They need to address the Luna. It's going to be able to protect it with the banish, but once they pop out, can they catch out Nade? These rapiers starting to go to work. Nade might be doing it for them, but Niku. A great jump. Have they bought enough time here? Morphling tries the waveform over the top. All eyes on trying to bring Nade down. Rapier on the deck. Got the juice. We'll pick that up. And with the extra damage, things playing with. How, how are you going to be able to stop this man? You can stun him all you want, but he's got the attribute shift out. Satanic up in a couple of seconds. Got the juice. We'll turn to Nande further down to the south as well. The Magnetize just taking them down. Niku's got a triple kill. He started this game off rough, but he might finish it off with a big streak as well. They're able to finally get the finishing blow. He's got the juice is still up. Nande trying to play inside <laughs> the tree line, but... Nande just has nothing left in the tank. Without the Rapier, he can do nothing to the Morphling. Beyond godlike forgot the juice. And this game is over. Navi Jr. They're going to send Dandelions down through the lower bracket, taking in a three-game thriller. Yeah, very good, you know. Very nice. So, uh, <clears throat> at times, maybe both of these teams were a little bit hesitant to... You know, make the one... The decisive move. They waited always for Rod, but it was it was well disciplined. In the end, uh, we also got the rapier on Luna. The fight looked very nice. Uh, unfortunately, they had that ages. They had the chiefling that also was left unused. And even with that mistake of Centaur jumping in and using his BKB, that also didn't matter because he had a refresher orb, or I should say refresher card from Roshan. So 